Hello, everybody. Oh, I have a cat joining me today. Um, so, first step on the, on the, I guess the menu here. Uh, yesterday, I explained that we would not be doing Final Fantasy today, even though we're listening to beautiful Final Fantasy music, beautiful piano covers by the uh, great and arduous uh, Chewy Melodies. Today we are actually going to be doing world building. Uh, I made this change because... <laughs> Hello, Bulba! Yeah, today I made this change because, um, well, Monster Hunter Rise came out, uh, literally, I want to say 30 minutes ago, and Leon will not be joining me for Final Fantasy today. So instead, we are going to start creating, uh, different aspects of a, f a fantasy or sci-fi world. Whatever suits your needs for your personal story or even if it's just for fun, because I know a lot of people just create because it's it's fun to do. Uh, I'm just gonna give everyone a couple of minutes to hop in here. Since it is pretty early, I tend to stream. Well, at least it's early for me. I don't know everyone else's uh, optimal times for hopping in a stream. <laughs> I'm messing around with my eyes. I see you. Oh, also, uh, before I really get started, I added a few commands. I noticed some people were trying to do commands like lurk. Oh, hello, Rad Dread. Welcome, welcome. Uh, yeah, I noticed a few people were trying to do uh, lurking. Uh, I even added a, a pronouns command just in case, even though I have my pronouns written down below. Yeah, welcome, welcome. Alright, so everything should be set up. I have my notes here. Um, what I'm going to be focusing on today is working on a race. I want to make my own fantasy race. Now, I've Admittedly, I've made like, t like 20 of these things already, <laughs> because I, ha I have a, uh, a very big passion, I suppose, for creating fantasy people and their cultures. I really like exploring uh, language, clothing, uh, even like government, religion, everything that uh, stems from a bunch of people coming together making a community, and eventually making this big, sprawling culture, maybe an empire, who knows. But I just love those kind of exercises. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> shh, shh. It's because I really love clothing, okay? I, I uh, spent, I want to say two hours a few weeks ago, looking through my, um, uh, my I have a I have a, a fashion template by the way of my races and I spent yeah two hours drawing over each piece of clothing to kind of simulate the evolution of over 200 years of fashion and it was really fun so I have I want to say 20 outfits set up for my human race on my fantasy world so that's why you heard clothing in a huge confident font because fashion is one of my favorite things to explore when it comes to people that and language I love making my own con links so we're going to be seeing those at some point but we gotta lay the groundwork first and make a race from scratch which is what I want to do today I already have a template set up which is about <laughs> which is like five pages in a Google Doc, uh, all template, no information, just bare bones, this is what you need to make it. Um, I know when I used it for one of my other races, it ended up being uh, 20 pages, because I have a problem, 
But we're not going to be focusing on the races I've already made because they're pretty fleshed out. Today I want to make something brand new and take people through the, I guess, the uh, logistical hoops that I usually take to create a new race. <laughs> hey, plant races could be a thing. Uh, we just have to look at how that would come to be. If you want to make a plant race alongside me, I mean, hey... Ayo, rock races, any race that you want to make, it all starts with an idea. I need to find my drawing glove. Oh, you don't have to be good at art, or you don't have to like what your art looks like in order to uh, create a race. It can all just be a writing exercise, and you can go find uh, images on either Google or whatever, and look up reference points. And just kind of be like, well, this is what I want them to look like, but this is how I want their hair to be. And just start setting up a couple of folders. That's what I do for a lot of my races. Uh, for example, I recently created a uh, four-armed snake-like race. But they're very fast runners. So I gave them, uh, I took references from ostriches. I gave them ostrich-like legs and feet. Because they're extremely good at running. However, they are, uh, they ever what's the word, they evolved to come out of the trees, so they have evolved to have four arms, two for holding on to branches and things, and two for carrying young. Just something like that, just grab whatever sparks your fancy. <laughs> Snakes but put legs back on them, yes, that's exactly what I did. I said snakes. But legs? Here, let's see if I can find a picture of them. I really love my my beautiful race. Um, so what we're going to do is go over here and... Uh, ha ha! Look! It's me! Now, oh, I, it's it says art, and there will be art involved. But we're mostly going to be doing a lot of writing. <laughs> well, at least I'm going to be doing writing with like art on the side. If that makes sense. And if you want to follow along, like if you've had a, an idea brewing in your head for a long time, and you want to finally just push it all out, you can follow along with this. So let me find my my aliens. Where are my snakeos? Mm, I have a lot of folders in here because I... Uh, I make folders by the month, so I sometimes if I don't know what month I made it, then I'm not going to be able to find it. Aha! Here they are. Okay. These are my beautiful, beautiful alien babies. Um, I don't know if Twitch will get mad at me for sharing that, actually. Hold on. Um, give me just a second. I don't want to... Uh, catch anything from Twitch. It, it doesn't show anything provocative, but I don't want to... I don't want to take any uh, any chances here. So I'm gonna just put some little black bars real quick. Alright. Just trying to be careful. I don't want to get a, I don't want to get Twitch policed here. Even though there is technically nothing here, I'm just covering pectorals. <laughs> uh, I still don't want Twitch to be like, oh, there, there could be a Nepal. So I'm just gonna play it safe. This is just an exercise to show off their. Uh... There we go. Okay, now let's go back. Boop, here we are. So this is the race that I created um, a while back. They are my snake race, but they have a lot more going on than just snake with legs. Uh, as you can see, I gave them the ostrich legs here, or the, uh, the inspired ostrich legs. They have the ostrich feet the really good running across the savanna feet. 
Um, I also took into account just how many toes they would have because of evolution. Uh, because I believe ostriches, or most birds in general, uh, have, and as well as most animals, they have these little nubs up here where it just slowly evolved into their legs over time. <laughs> Thank you. No, that's okay. Uh, it just took a lot of brain power. Or, not really brain power, but it took a lot of mulling over options. But I gave them uh, as many digits as I would conclude that their feet would have. And I gave them the four arms. Uh, one other thing that I really like about them, however, is that I gave them these little uh, feelers. That they have one pair of ears, but then they have this second pair of false ears that close whenever they're underwater. Now, I'm not exactly sure what uh, evolution constituted that. Also, if you can hear someone in the background, that's just Leon. He's playing, uh, he's playing himself some Monster Hunter Rise. Uh, they also kept their tail, because they still primarily stay in the trees, despite having such powerful running legs. Um, but they also have this rigid little gap here that helps cling to the branches. So they're both terrifying in the trees and on land. I also added a fun little thing for them, if I could open it. Uh, those little feelers that you see on their head, those can open. This is what the males look like. The males have much bigger feelers. Uh, the females will have like these little feelers that can open up just a little bit. And these iridescent, shiny little membranes are uh, used for bioluminescence. Because they come from a mushroom biome, a giant mushroom biome that canopies the sun. So they've had to evolve to both take in the bioluminescent foods that they ingest, as well as the uh, just to provide a low light for other species of their own kind to find them, as well as to take care of and alert their young of other stuff. Hi, Yoasobi. How you doing? Or Sobi. I've heard that name be thrown around a few times for you. We are discussing races today. <laughs> uh, no, I've I've done that a few times. <laughs> Alright, Sobi, cool. Uh, but yeah, uh, they also have eyes that are shaped specifically with irises that have developed to not take in light at certain corners so that they don't blind themselves with their own bioluminescence. And I have a reference for the female feelers as well. Let me look for them. Here they are. Uh, this is what the females look like. When their little tendrils open up, they're these much smaller little flaps. And the the color or the colors, the uh the lighting is a bit different than males because it's meant to draw the attention of their young and nothing else. While males are meant to scare predators away. Uh, but they are all the same size. Uh, body shape. The only way to tell the difference between a male and a female are their feelers. Now there is a third sex that I like to call you males. Uh, I do that a lot with a lot of my races that have three sexes. Um, because there will come a time where once in a while an egg will be born with one chromosome. Which it happens sometimes. We have species of lizards that can lay eggs without being fertilized, and that's essentially what happens. The egg is laid, uh, and it can still hatch, but it wasn't given DNA by a second parent. And these guys are considered the third gender of their species, and their nubs just stop right here. It never grows. They're considered uh, more precious in terms of religion, so they're usually in religious positions. Oh yeah, they also have these lovely little uh, uh, cartilage pallets just outside of their mouth so they can open it because, like I said, they're still snake-like. Or at least that's one of their 
Yeah, yeah, I think they're called the, uh... Whip... Whiptail? Whiptail lizards? I think that's what they're called. They can lay eggs, and it just... They don't need a male to help with that. Which is really interesting. But I took that concept and ran with it. So, let us get rid of those. Oh yeah, for those who didn't see, here's their full body. Their powerful runny legs. Their little pads for holding onto trees. Um, I can give you a quick taste of what the bioluminescence looks like, too. Because, uh, look at this sweet boy. Sweet boy mode. Sweet, sweet little boy mode. And then they go angie mode. I actually called it angie mode. And then Angie mode, but uh, glowing. <laughs> and they flash you. <laughs> Many species of whiptail lizards are actually lesbians. L lesbians. Yeah. I spelled, I spelled lesbian wrong. <laughs> I was trying to make a pun, but then I just spelled the regular world wrong. It, uh, Angie, and then an advanced Angie. Yes, you're right. <laughs> Let's see. Liz Bean. There we go. I did it. Pun secured. But yeah, sweet per boy mode, and then angie mode, and then super angie mode. I'm gonna flash your face and make you run away. This is their only true mode of like super defense, because they are uh, they're pretty small in relation to their ecosystem. I mean, they're huge compared to humans. They're like I want to say they're like seven feet tall, but in relation to the planet that they live on, they're from an exoplanet that has just so much more stuff that's bigger than them. So they need to have this flashing, first and foremost, as the most effective way to get predators away from them and their babies, their, their eggs. So now that I'm done with that, uh, I'm done with that little, that fun little tangent. Uh, uh, we can start making our own race, kind of like that. Let me just adjust my pen. There we go. Do you guys uh, like my beautiful pen? Let's see if I can. Let's see if I can do it. Calligraphy. Yeah. There we go. All right. Enough uh, futzing around. Okay, so. <laughs> kind of a uh uh, uh uh what rad dread what what are we, what's our brain going to huh what what's happening Ex explain yourself sir <laughs> ma'am maestro whatever whatever thine pronouns are share with the class sir ma'am mm, okay I, I won't worry about it for now. <laughs> Alrighty, so if you are already, pull out a piece of paper and a pen, or pull out a, a word. Hoda, 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 hello, how are you? Guess what I'm doing? We're making races today. We're gonna we're gonna build a fantasy race to simp for. I, I mean, put our put on our world. Yeah. <coughs> All right, they them. So maestra. At least that's. What I'd say, I I make up dumb words. I'm sorry, but yeah, grab a grab a piece of paper, grab a pen, uh, or grab a notepad, uh, word pad, a uh, Google Doc, whatever you got around, and we're gonna start writing down some dope stuff to make a f our own fantasy race from scratch. Let me just loop my music here. Oh, uh. Maestra. It's like a... It's like an old word that I found or learned or... I don't remember where it came from, but it's like a gender neutral term for it. I have a whole list of them that I just use nowadays. Because English needs more gender neutral words. A 
already. So I am going to grab my... Uh, here it is, my template. And we are going to make our race. No more stalling. No more dilly-dallying. You got your paper, you got your doc, you got your word pad. Yeah, are you are y'all ready? I hope you're ready. So the first thing I usually do wanting to create a new race is I come up with a design concept based on either uh, a human or an animal that I really just want to explore. Um, I have a cat yelling at me. Uh, so today what I want to do, I've created a few concept ideas for a wasp race, a mud dauber race specifically, but I never got to really build on that. So today I'm going to be working on fleshing those guys out. There we go. Welcome to my builder race. So mm, do I want to do my daubers or do I want to do something else? Maybe I should start completely from scratch. From something that has even less ideas. Because at least in my daubers, I have like a, a small rudimentary culture I have brewing in my brain. And I really want to just make something completely from square one. Let's let's do that. So what do I want my race to look like? What do you want your race to look like? Uh do you want it to be a plant race? Do you want it to be a rock race? Will that be viable? in the narrative or world that you're putting them in? Or are you just making them for fun? You know, fun little fun little exercise. Sometimes that's all you really need to do to get the creative juices flowing. Let's see. I know what I can do. So, I'm going to have my species... Mm, I'm going to keep them humanoid for now. They're going to just look kind of like humans. Uh, keep it a little simple. Uh, I don't think I'll add any specifically animal traits to them. Not yet. Not that I can think of. Mm. I think I want to put them underground. I want to give them in this underground, maybe, maybe with spider-like, maybe a spider-like motif. Something like that. Yeah, something, something spider. Something with spiders. Spiders? Ayo? Mm. Let's look around here. Uh, I also... I want them to have markings. I want them to have black... Let's give them black markings. This is going to be a fantasy race that... <laughs> spiders? Eyes? Spiders? Ayo? Um, this is going to be a... A uh, fantasy wish fulfillment for myself. Because, um... Oh, kitten. What little one? I have a cat yelling at me. Hi, you. There we go. I pet him. But... This is going to be a wish fulfillment. I'm going to... I, I really like uh, gothic Victorian stuff, as you can plainly see from my uh, my outwear. <laughs> so I'm going to do something to do with that. Something to do with gothic apparel or gothic... the gothic look. Uh, What else? Oh, I know, I know. Put the cat on stream. <laughs> hey, kitty. Cecil. Oh no, he's he ran across the room. He he doesn't want to be famous. He's not ready. Um, I do want to draw him at some point so he could be like sitting on my stream with me. <laughs> Gothic is spider people, ayo. I mean, goths are already spidery. <laughs> they love Halloween. We love Halloween. Uh, also, oh, I know, I know what else. Um, markings. I want to give them black markings, but I think I want it to look like corpse paint. 
Now, when I say corpse paint, I mean the, like, really white face with the, like, black teary eyes and, and the, uh, like, uh, also Kiss. I know Kiss does it. Um, it's, it's a, it's a very common design that you see on, uh, like, Swedish black metal bands. Uh, I know Cradle of Filth does it, too, sometimes. It's that, like, gnarled, black, dripping look. Let me, let me pull up an example. I guess I could draw an example. I'll draw an example. Something like this, where it's like... Mm, here's the face, here's the eyes. Nope. Small root-like people? That's so cute! Yeah, write everything that you come up with down so you never forget that, and then you can work on it. But yeah, like, like something like this, where they have, like, uh, dripping, and then they're like, ah, uh, dripping. Y you know what I'm talking about, the corpse paint. Where they're like, oh, cat, hello. I want something like that. Maybe not so hardcore, but something to that effect. And it's going to be natural. It's going to be like a natural skin design. Okay, I think I have all of my design ideas down uh, as a basic concept. If you guys are going to get all of your concepts down. Because I'm going to start uh, plugging all this in to my template to figure out how these creatures are going to work. Okay. So, taking this into consideration, oops, <laughs> I'm going to start creating my race in full. So, physical appearance. How do we want them to look? What kind of proportions do I want to give them? What's silhouette? Now, when I say silhouette, I mean like, if you look at them and they're just standing there, maybe their arms are up, their legs are spread a bit, what are their proportions going to look like? Yeah, see, that could work. Uh, calcium or keratin that has a more rock-like state? Uh, that could actually tell a lot about the kind of planet they're on. And this is why I like working on people first. I know when it comes to world building, people like to go, Oh, you literally have to build the world first. But no, no. I like to make the people first. And then I like to figure out why those people evolved the way they did. And from what that sounds like, they probably live under, like, a red sun. Or a sun that kicks off a lot of radium. Ra uh, radiation? Not radium. Um so that they need that uh, keratin and that calcium to perhaps protect them a bit more. You know, it's it's all about that. If you design the people, and then you figure out where they're living. And it's really fun. So yeah, write all of that down. Now we figure out their silhouettes. Once you have everything put down that you can think of. For me, I'm thinking... I don't want them to be too big. I'm thinking these people are probably a little smaller than, say, the average, like, average human. So maybe they're about... Hmm, five feet to five five in general. Uh, maybe a little shorter. Like, that's their, that's their range. I know most humans uh, average around 6 feet to 5 6, depending on the ethnicity. But I'm only working on one ethnicity for these people right now. So I don't have to worry about that too much. So I'm going to make them... I want to say I will average them at... 5... 5'2. Uh, 5'2 or 3. And uh, because I am very much an advocate for males and females being the same size, I'm, mm, this is going to count towards both. <laughs> I 
Alright, so there's Silhouette. Uh, I'm not gonna do anything too crazy. Nothing too separate from a standard human. They're gonna have their, their head, their neck, and their shoulders. Hips, and then their legs. There we go. Just a, just a simple little test. Yeah, nothing too crazy. They're just gonna have their standard head, two arms, two legs. They're probably going to be a little more spindly because I, I am basing them a bit off spiders. Uh, but I don't think I want to give them necessarily keratin. Um, uh, what I'm thinking of doing with their uh, bodies, uh, specifically their skin, is to have it not necessarily like ours. I, I don't want it to be standard... But I do want it to have markings on it, so when a... Perhaps when a, you're first born, you have a lot more of this dark coloration to you, and then as you age and you get bigger, your skin stretches and stretches out those marks, maybe. So, yeah, they're gonna have to grow fairly they're have to gonna have to go through a lot of like series of puberty maybe in order to get those markings. Yeah. I'm thinking that. The question is should I give them sharp ears? Maybe give them not really like bad ears like mine. Maybe mm, not quite elf ears either. Maybe a combination of the two. Because they are going to be underground. They're going to be cave dwellers. Cave dwellers. So I do want to do something with like a baddie esque appearance, and that would also lean into the whole goth thing. Hmm. Maybe their ears. Let's see. Here's a standard. Oops. Standard human ear. Hmm. I could have this bigger, and then they could have. Something like that. So maybe, maybe an ear that points a bit. Hmm. And then has this little lip. Maybe have another one right here. And then have this go up a bit. Maybe have it come in like that. Yeah, there we go. Also, is the music too low or too loud? Let me know. Because I can hear it just fine. But I don't know if it's overshadowing me or not. I adjusted it just in case anyway. So this is the basic concept for what they're going to look like. This is what their basic body idea is going to be, just the simple humanoid shape and their ear shape. Um, also because they're in a cave, uh, they need something with light or something to help them see a bit better. And on my world, a little touch too loud. Okay, I can I can turn it down a little bit more. I figured it was a little loud. It looked like it was peeking over me a bit. Oh no, close in the distance. Uh, the song kills me. Uh, fun fun little story. Fun little uh, tangent, real quick. Um, all of this music makes me incredibly emotional <laughs> and makes me want to cry, especially this one. Um. If you've played Final Fantasy, uh, you'll know why. But basically, um, the story behind it is that, uh, which makes it sadder, um, the man who ran the music department, his name is Soken. I think it's, uh, it starts with an M. Matsuhiro? Matsuyoshi? Matsuhiro? Uh, one of the two. Uh, but we just call him Soken. He was apparently battling with. Uh, cancer while working 
on this song. Uh, all of the music, really. And you can just kind of tell he thought this was going to be his last hurrah. He's in remission now, thank God, but um, you can just hear it in the notes that he thought this was going to be his last. And it's just so, so sad. <laughs> uh, you can hear it in the lyrics, too. This uh, The piano cover does not have the lyrics. Thank fuck, because I would be crying right now. <laughs> Um, I'm not going to play it because I don't. You don't need a bat crying on stream. But yeah, uh, tangent over. Good, good music. Good boy. Soaking is good boy. Uh, whew, I'm okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying not to cry. Sorry. All right, back to world building. This is this is a happy stream. This is not a Desmond cries on stream stream. Okay, so, yeah, underground people. Uh, on my planet, it is possible for people to generate light from their eyes. I already have a race that can do that. They're called the Nanashin, and they are a beautiful, like, androgynous uh, race with only uh, one, one sex, one gender. Um, uh, they can... They need the eye glow because of where they're from. They actually live on the moon. <laughs> they live on it, they live in it, and they have developed in such a way to have this glow. So I'm thinking these guys could have it too because they are specifically underground. That also means that they're probably going to be extremely pale because they have never touched sunlight. And they're probably more used to bioluminescence. Why Why do I always go back to bioluminescence? What is with me? <laughs> um, yeah, so maybe the bioluminescence... Maybe it is in their diet and it gives them these glowing eyes. So they need to see in the caves. So I'm going to give them glowing eyes. I don't know if they should have irises per se... Um, but maybe the glowing should be coming from the irises. <laughs> Moons inhabited. What? <laughs> Moons inhabited. <laughs> Moons got hot ladies on it. What? <laughs> hot ladies. Moon. Let's go. I love the Nanashin. They're a beautiful race. They're they're all like feminine androgynous, uh, but they are typically called women whenever they visit the. Uh, the surface, the surface of the planet, because they're, they do look very ephemerally beautiful. Um, and some of them will stick with that gender when they're there. But uh, in their culture, they don't have a concept of man and woman. They're just them. But sometimes the contact with the planet, or extended observations of it, because they're like the guardians, some of them will start developing ideas of a gender that is not their... Uh, socially predetermined and they'll go oh I feel actually yeah I do feel like a woman or actually no I, I feel more masculine and they will take on those traits but uh, for the most part I just call them my beautiful ladies because <laughs> they all do default to women when on the planet because they're just like eh makes, makes shit easier I guess <laughs> So yeah, we will give them we will give them glowing eyes. Uh, I'm probably going to have it to where the pupils themselves maybe glow, that they can turn off through a bioluminescent trick. Uh, but for the most part, maybe their pupils are really wide, and then they just have this pretty iris ring. Let's say, kind of like, you know how the eye eye has just the hugest pupils because they're a nocturnal animal? Uh, I th I'm thinking something like that. And then the light can come from that to give them a, uh, to give them a way to see. Um, I'm thinking their sclera is black just because you're never going to get to see it anyway. So it, it hasn't really, hasn't really developed the same way as other uh, races. 
There we go. So yeah, this will this will shine like a light. Hmm. What else can I do to them? If they're underground. Oxygen might not be as prevalent. So maybe their noses will be a bit smaller. Um, so they don't have to breathe in as much. Not to mention, their blood might actually be blue. Which, I know, it sounds weird and dumb, but hear me out. Um, the way blood works... <laughs> I, I also gave my, my four-armed aliens blue blood. Listen, I, I don't have a problem. Yes, I do. I might give them blue blood just because of the low oxygen intake that they will be... They will be putting in because you need iron typically when you're taking in a lot of oxygen you will see that in most mammals reptiles uh, birds whatever is on the surface up here breathing in a lot of air per day however there are some creatures on our planet that have blue blood such as horseshoe crabs and that's because they don't breathe in a lot of oxygen um, iron is a lot better of a, not really a conductor, what's the word, a, a carrier for oxygen, while copper-based blood, which is what makes it blue, uh, carries a lot less oxygen, and it's a lot more evolutionarily cheap, I guess. So you will see occasionally uh, species and animals that have blue blood, uh, which is why Vulcans and Romulans are from a low oxygen planet. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. <laughs> so I'm thinking we'll give them blue blood, maybe? Blue blood? Oh, whoa. That I'll leave that on the maybe column. We don't know. Because I don't know how far down they're going to be in this cave. And uh, as I work on my guys, uh, you start... Uh, contemplating, I guess, blood as well, maybe. <laughs> I know uh, Bulba mentioned plants. Um, I know plants usually have chlorophyll, so that would come out as green. Chlorophyll uh, is used primarily to, tr uh, to move sugars, sugars throughout their body, uh, that they have converted from sunlight because of leaves. However, if they're a root people, that could be a little different. It just depends on how much sun they do soak up with maybe whatever leaves they might have sticking out while they are primarily underground. Um, but if they're like a, a, a strictly underground people, uh, that means they probably get their sugars from something else. More, like the, more than likely the berries that Bulba has mentioned. Oh no, <laughs> that's, that's dark. No, don't kill my babies. They've just barely begun to live. Uh, actually, the blood might be somewhat bioluminescent as well because of this underground uh, shenaniganery that's happening. Because, uh, once again, animals will take on traits of what they've been eating over time. That's just how evolution works. Uh, there have been species that have gained bioluminescence from digesting bioluminescent mushrooms. Uh, it's just what happens you kind of develop an ecosystem with each other and you start taking traits from each other. Hmm. I still don't know if I want to give them blue blood. I'll, I'll sit on that. Yeah, I'll sit on that. Because I still have no idea how far they're down. Like, is it so far that they they don't get a lot of oxygen? Well, never, we don't know. But I do want their noses to be a little smaller. Like, flatter on the face. Maybe like this. Little cute nose. Little baby nose. Maybe something like this. Hmm. And then they'll have a bump here sometimes. And it'll flatten. Hmm. They probably won't have as much nose shape variation as humans do. Because uh, humans, we have so many uh, nose shape variations. We have like these little curly ones, and then we have these, like, hawk-looking ones. Uh, and then those can just 
<laughs> propagate and make like even more shapes. I don't think these guys will have very crazy nose shapes. Hmm. Yeah. All right. So back on to the spider situation. I don't want them to necessarily be spiders, but I do want them to have a close relationship with spiders. Uh, specifically giant widows. On my planet, there are giant bugs. Huge bugs. Just, just ex exponentially huge bugs. Uh, so much so that one of them, a mantid race, has actually appeared and started wandering around like in the southern hemispheres. So, of course, other giant insects exist, including spiders. Um, spiders are actually very commonly used for clothing. Uh, there are a few races who have utilized spiders. The s <laughs> yeah, kinda. <laughs> they're like, oh no, I don't want to visit the eight-legged creepy people. And then they just walk in and they're like, oh. Oh, you have you have normal legs? Wait, you're not spiders? Where, where's your fangs? Why don't you have 5,000 eyes? And they're just like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> That'd be pretty funny. These underground spider people. Oh god. Wait, they're just normal people. Yeah, I'm gonna make them have widows for pets. Like spiders. Wid uh, widow spiders. <laughs> so. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. There we go. <laughs> Let's give them the most doily legs. Hey, yeah, yeah, cool. The spiders, the spiders dancing. Yeah, they're dancing. There we go. Cool. The spiders, a big. Yeah, I want the spiders to be huge. Um, I know I have some tarantula spiders in my world that are like. I think I explained to them as like the size of dogs. Like these things are huge. But think of all the implications of that. Think of how much spider silk you're gonna get from that. There is no way that is not a ludicrous, ludic, ludicrous, ludicrous. The big business. That's a, that's a lot of spider silk. So I'm sure weaving, being a spider silk weaver, is very prevalent in their culture. Also, how how goth is that to just be like, yeah, I made my my jacket from spider silk. <laughs> uh, I they may also tan the uh, tan the chitin from the bodies of uh, dying and dead uh, black widow spiders. So they're going to get spider silk from these guys. And they're also going to get uh, chitin leather, like a very, probably a very fine, very soft touching, but a uh, durable and tough uh, material of chitin leather from black widows, because black widows um, are pretty squishy. They're, they're they are very squish. Um, uh, maybe they also eat the meat of the legs, kind of like uh, how we do with crabs. Because, let's be honest, crabs are just uh, water spiders. Spider milk pensive! Oh no, what is spider milk? I don't want to know. Maybe I shouldn't ask. Let's, let's, not, let's not learn what spider milk is. I'm scared. I, I don't think they'd create milk. I don't think this is a species that would have milk. <laughs> Because they don't, they, I don't think they'd have access to any animals that create milk. Some spiders produce milk or milk like substances. Is this true? I am scared to look that up. Hold on. Hold on. We're looking this up. Why do I do this? I always do this. I did this Monday. I googled, I googled Jerusalem crickets. You crazy motherfuckers. <laughs> Spider milk. Uh, oh, 
it's from uh, jumping spiders. Interesting. But where is it? What the? Okay. Okay, spiders make milk. Oh no. <laughs> I don't know what to do with this information. <laughs> uh, it's a... Ew. Oh, oh, ugh, ugh, oh god. Oh god, it's just... It's just recycled spider eggs. Oh no. <laughs> Ew. No, no spider milk. No, stop it. We're not making spider milk. <laughs> silk. It's only silk. We're not doing milk, sorry. No, no mommy milkers for our spiders, please. No, I'm just picturing a spider with titties. Help me. Uh, spiders with booba. <laughs> Okay. Okay, I think I've recovered. Uh, mm, mm, hate that. Also, uh, clipping is allowed. You're allowed to clip spider milk. <laughs> I need to. I need to figure out how to get stream elements to be like, hey, you can clip this if you want to. But I'm still baby new at all of that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're moving on. <laughs> I didn't read that. I, s I can't read suddenly. I don't know. <laughs> can't read. Hold on. <laughs> Where is it? I need to find something for you. This is this is just for you and only you. <laughs> let me let me find it. <laughs> me, me right now with chat. I can't read. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just goofing. We're goofing here. Oops. There we go. Alrighty, <laughs> back on track. I see. <clears throat> All right, Whew. all right. Physical, physical appearance. <laughs> uh, now that we have all of our little notes written down that I personally want to do for my babies, and hopefully you guys have notes written down for your ideas, your your new race, your babies. We're going to move on to uh, putting this all together in a cohesive pile. Spider eggs like chicken. I don't even know if that would work. Aren't spider eggs more like... Like fish eggs? Mm, spider... S spider fish eggs. Spider... Mm, what is that called? Caviar? Ew. <laughs> Let's not. <laughs> Actually, would they have access to snake eggs? That could act as a... I'm not, I'm not, you know what? We're not going to talk about food at the moment. I need to figure out what they look like. <laughs> so, um, underground, that makes them white, really white, probably white pale. I want to give them the corpus paint, though, so they're probably born uh, very, uh, like, ebony colored, uh, very dark. And then as they age, the marks are going to stretch and fade a little bit over time to leave these like here let's draw a quick face of how I've been designing them so then as they're born they will have these these black markings coming off of them because their skin has stretched And 
Now, some markings will be a lot more prominent than other markings, I'm sure. Let's give, let's give this guy, girl, whatever, some eyebrows. Um, I want the markings to be more or less prevalent, depending. So, yeah, there we go. Time to do a little sketch of how I see these people. So, I'm going to pull up my... <laughs> my... My fashion template because I have a <laughs> I have a problem. Uh, if I can find it, oh no, I have a new problem, and it's called I can't find it. Uh, is it in here? I did, I did move it, I did move it. All right, this is my fashion template. We're going to remove all of this, as well as turn off my symmetrical symmetrical tool. Um. And I'm going to use this to kind of mark out their body proportions. I did say I wanted them to be the same size, both male and female, uh, regarding of uh, proportions. Um, because I want clothing to be the thing that they use to more prominently show off their gender. Because I've noticed a fun little thing. Um, in humans, at least, whenever there is less of a dichotomy between the dimorphisms, the more prominently the clothing... Because, like, nowadays, you'll see, uh, if, a, if it's a woman, a woman usually really likes to emphasize uh, curvy shapes. They wear a lot of makeup. It's a very clear if someone is a lot more uh, feminine or a lady in the modern day than a man. Well, because uh, of our shapes, our body shapes are a little more, a little different because we do stuff a bit differently. Uh, but say, like in ancient Norse or uh, even in India. Uh, there are a lot less differences between men and women, uh, especially in terms of facial structure. Uh, I've noticed, and the modern day ladies like to trim their eyebrows a lot more, while dudes... This is just stereotyping, by the way. I'm not, I'm not saying this is just how all society works, but typically what I've seen in Western societies... Uh, women tend to take care of themselves a bit more hygienically, while men don't. And this is just talking, like I said, generalized. Uh, dudes don't usually tend to trim their eyebrows or uh, fill in their eyebrows. They, they're like, no, I'm manly. I don't put on makeup. You know, all that, that dumb, toxic masculinity. Uh, which is, sadly, something that makes dudes not clean themselves. The, the dudes that gotta prove something. You know what I'm talking about. Um, so there is a bit of a bit more of a difference between our genders, at least. While if you look at other uh, cultures, there is a less of an emphasis on having the same clothing because we all wear pants, we all wear t-shirts. Um, but let's say we look at the ancient Norse. Uh, they all wore makeup. They all washed their hair. They all had the same care routines, and they all looked the same. Men and women had a very similar bone structure. It's actually... I, I don't know if this is just an aptitude because they don't want to accept that there are women fighters, but uh, archaeologists have stated that they can't really tell the difference between a male and a female uh, bone structure because they were just... The men were a little more feminine shaped, and the women were just a bit more masculine shaped, as as they put it. Like I said, I don't know if it's just them going, "Oh, I couldn't tell it was a woman because it had a sword in the in the grave," and it's like, eh, dummies. But um, it leads me to believe, through a evolutionary standpoint, that Norse men and women probably looked really much the same in terms of body structure. So there was more of an emphasis on men had to grow beards and keep their beards while uh, women were strictly wearing uh, very different clothing from men in terms of silhouette shape. So I want to do that. I want the clothes to tell the gender, not the body shape. That was a hell of a tangent and I apologize. But hopefully <laughs> we, we all learned something, including myself. 
Now the question is, do I want them to look more feminine in terms of humans look or masculine? Or should we go androgynous? Because see, I do have an androgynous uh, template over here. Hmm. I'm thinking a little more androgynous. Something like this. So, yeah, let's do that. And I will make them shorter. They're going to be about 5'2 on average, so about right here. So I'll shrink them to that. And I want them to be a little more lithe. They're going to be a bit thinner. They, they can't build as much muscle definition as a, a human can. So we're going to play with that. I'm just going to do a little quick sketch over my my, my person here. Hmm. I'm gonna bring in their shoulders just a bit more, maybe to here. Uh, maybe make their necks a little longer. Hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll say their necks are a little longer. Oh, maybe their heads are a little more squished too. Yeah. Also, they'll have their ears. Oh, that, that was a funky looking ear. Now let's give them a bit of a longer neck and more of a drop of their shoulders than uh, the average human. And let's give them an androgynous look. They're going to have the exact same uh, width of their shoulders and their hips. And they will have a waist that starts about here. And then they will get slight hippage. There we go. That looks good. And then they will have longer, spindlier legs. This is where their knee is going to go. This also means that they're going to have long, spindly arms. Now, I uh, I know you said, uh, one of you said you wanted to make a rock race. Uh, in order to carry all of that heavy weight, uh, I think it would do the same. It would, it would do well to have the opposite effect. They're probably a lot more broad. I'm assuming they would have more of a broad stroke to them because they need that that muscle structure and that, that bone definition in order to carry all of that keratin, all of that weight to their body. Mm, I think I'll also give them very thin, long, spindly hands. Probably a little longer than a human's. Um, because once again, they are spider-like. I am basing them off of spiders. Um, but what exactly they have evolved from is, is is yet to be determined. This is a fantasy race, so it could be a creature uh, that did evolve in the caves that I've just... that we don't have, like, in nature. <laughs> or maybe we do have it in nature and we just don't know because we haven't uh, seen them. Ha 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 ha. Let's fix that. There we go. Close up that arm a little. I should have turned on symmetry, but here we are. Long, spindly hand. A little bit longer than a human's. Oh, cat, no. I don't need my cat trying to drink, uh, drink stuff he can't have. <laughs> right, and they will have very spindly long legs. And long feet. Long slender feet. Um, probably not too wide, because they don't have that much weight to push their feet down on. Um, if it's a bigger race, or a, a wider race, they're probably going to have a lot bigger, squarer, squatter feet, because it, it he needs to hold up that uh, that weight. But with these guys, they're they're not really gonna need that. They're they're underground. They 
They're also really lithe, really thin. They're very spindly. Um, and we're going to make them a little smaller. Uh, about five feet. About here, maybe. There we go. And this is going to be the body shape for all of the genders, all of the sexes. Which, sex and, and gender are two different things, so I'm trying to uh, uh, generalize with that. So there we go. I made my my race base, <laughs> my, my base race, and I'm going to turn off my human. There they are. That's going to be the body that I use for my race. So I've got down the basic physical proportions for their body. I'm going to start working on their face now. Um, if you have a plant or a rock race or a, a bird race, um, now would be a good time to figure out where you're going to put in all of those extra pieces that they evolved with. For example, if you have a rock race, um, I don't know how big they're going to be, but um, I know if I was a rock, they would probably be a bit more squat, and they would definitely be built. Oh, <laughs> Just checking on my kitty. And depending on where you put the plating uh, for the rock or the keratin, uh, you would have to consider where their arms and legs and uh, appendages bend on each other. Uh, for example, look at like a, a ball jointed doll. A ball. ball ugh, BJDs. That's a better way to say it. Uh, ball joint dolls are a pretty good. Uh, referencing point for if you're putting natural armor or keratin uh, onto your characters or creatures because they still need that squishy bendy part that gives them their arms um, you can also look at armadillos maybe uh, an armadillo would be a really good reference point for rock creatures because I'm assuming that's a bit how it could work as for root creatures, um, I would go through and figure out how their locomotion works with uh, more branch-like uh, apparatus. Uh, are the roots all in tandem with each other? Ahoy, Captain Riza! We are working on making our own fantasy race. <laughs> I am currently designing the basic body shape for them. Uh, I'm about to start designing their face. And we've already made a lot of headway in making notes for this race that I'm starting to create from scratch that I've been working with. That no, it's really fun. Uh, my cat's also in the way, so I can't reach my mouse. <laughs> Cecil, please move. Little buddy, come here. Come here, buddy. I know. I know. Go on. Go to bed. Go lay down, little one. Ow, my hair. Oh, thank you. Isn't it nice? I found this. Uh, it's, it's on Etsy, I believe. And then I messed with it and adapted it. And now I have my own notepad. And this is how I write now. I don't use paper. <laughs> there we go. So yeah, I have just finished designing the body character. The, uh, the body for the character. And these are the notes that I've taken. So what I'm going to start doing is applying these notes to the facial structure that I wanted to build up. A gorilla shape would actually work really well. It would help with the uh, more staunchy uh, body shape. If they have a more uh, down-to-earth squat look, then that would help them really carry themselves. The immersion. Yes, the, I'm glad my immersion is mwah. But, um, yeah, a gorilla shape would work really well. I personally would think so. Uh, mixed with maybe, like, an armadillo, a uh, slight inspiration for the plating and the, the rock structure on their bodies. Alrighty, uh, also, I added commands, so you can slash lurk if you want to. Uh, cat, please don't knock that over. Oh, goodbye. <laughs> Leon just hucked him onto the bed. Just bowled him. There you go. Thank you for the lurk. 
Alrighty. Now I'm going to design their, their beautiful, beautiful little faces. Um, this is going to be for both males and females and others. And it's going to apply to their faces as well. I'm not going to give them any uh, differentiating facial structures in order for you to tell it's, tell it's male or female. Um, they're going to figure out that way um, through their own biology. Either through um, scent or some other means that uh, humans and even like elves can't comprehend. Because I think it'd be really funny for them to just see one of these people and be like, I can't tell what you are because of my view on what gender is. And it's it's going to be great. And they're going to be like, well, I'm this, clearly. And they're like, wait, but uh, okay, fine. Even elves. My elves are pretty androgynous, but they can, they can tell. You can tell which one is which. Oh my goodness. No. Please. Ooh, ooh, that was a that's a sexy looking circle. Alright. So, since they are so lithe and they have longer necks, um they're underground. They're gonna have smaller noses and glowing eyes, maybe bigger than average eyes. And maybe smaller mouths, maybe a bit smaller mouths than the average human. I'm thinking that. So, uh, I also wanted their head to be a little more squished in than a human's. Maybe a bit more round than usual. Or at least more commonly. Maybe like this. Mm, well, if they're so spindly, maybe, maybe they're more gaunt. Maybe they have a gaunt structure, actually. Maybe like this. They have very, s like, very small chins. Because my humans typically have more of like a defined jaw and chin line, even if it's a, even if it's female. But for these guys, I want them to just have barely any chin. All right. Let's uh, let's fill in the back end of that cranium, so we know where their head is. There we go. And these are going to be more humanoid, so if you are creating something based on another animal, or if you have a sci-fi race in mind, or maybe multiple animals with pieces of their facial structure that you like and you want to put them together, uh, do that instead. For me, I'm just messing with human proportions for now. Um, but you did mention gorilla, so I would say look into uh, gorilla structures, um, unless you want to give them something a bit different. What, kitty? What? Why are you yelling at me? I'm being yelled at. He's telling me to do better, I guess. <laughs> I, will, I will work harder, I'm sorry. So, they're going to have longer necks, so I'm going to put that in. There we go. Simple basis for their heads. Let's shrink it a little bit. So I can see it a bit better. There we go. Let's fix up that leg. That leg looked a little gangly. There we go. So, looking at my notes, I do want to have those <coughs> those more batty looking ears. So that was this is what a human ear would look like. And then their ears would go up. I want it to have that little crook, and then I want it to come down in this just big swoop. In these in these really angled curves with this, uh, the uh, what is this? 
the part of the ear that has that little that little doink right there, that's going to be longer to emulate that that bat shape in the ear. And then we're gonna do this. Boop. Give them a little shape here. Um Yeah, they're probably not gonna have lobes, not like how we do. Uh, they just have this uh, skin right here. And then it's going to come in with th this web-like shape. There we go. That's what their ears are gonna be. It's bad, but I'm being around. I think I catch your shoes. Okay, cool. Thank you, Red Red, uh, for showing up. And uh, let's hope your internet fixes itself. Because I know I'd lose my shit if my internet started going down, especially right now. Um, and thank you for coming. Alright, so their eyes, I did want to make a bit bigger. So I'm going to over... Overshoot where... Oh. Uh, cat. <laughs> I'm gonna overshoot how I normally make my eye shapes into a bigger, wider look because they are underground and they need that eye space to see. I'll also give them very thin eyebrows. Um, I, let's see what corpse paint does with eyebrows because I do want them to look like corpse paint. I think they. I don't think they paint them over their eyebrows. Um, well, no, some do. Hmm. Interesting. So some do have eyebrows. <sighs> ah, little yawn. Damn it. <laughs> uh, some do paint over their eyebrows. So I think. I think they'll have eyebrows. It's just. Maybe they're very small. Like, maybe like this. Maybe very small baby eyebrows. That they could probably easily pluck if they don't want them. Uh, they'll be black. Or maybe a color of their hair. Oh god, I haven't thought of hair color. I will figure that out in a bit. <laughs> so yeah, they're going to have very big, very big expressive eyes. Uh, with black sclera. And then their pupils are going to be just as big. And their pupils are where the light is going to come from. And then they're going to have very small noses. Yeah, very small noses. And probably pretty small mouths, too. If they're gonna have small jaws, then they're probably gonna not have the biggest mouths, either. So just like that, maybe. Small mouths. Maybe round out that chin a little more. So maybe something like that. It probably looks a little creepy right now, but that's because it's not showing any expressions. Um, I will... <sighs> no! No, my ticker, no! <laughs> I refuse! So, yeah. I have, <laughs> I have a basic facial and eye structure for how I want them to be. Uh, this looks kind of young, though. I might make this what the babies look like, like the adolescents, and I might have the adults become a bit more gaunt over time. So let's let's try to make this an adult. Mm. Yeah, maybe something like this. Give them more of a gaunt, uh, very Vlad Dracula, uh, <laughs> Dracula uh, appearance. There we go. Okay, I think I am done with the physical proportions of what I want my species to look like. Um, I have my eye shape, my nose shape, and my mouth shape. Um, teeth. Teeth, teeth. What would they look like? What do they eat? Do I want them to be hmm, omnivores, maybe? I'll make them omnivores, so they will have the same teeth as humans. 
they'll just have like your standard little little doopies and then they'll have the the back ones like that so I'm gonna just do this they will have human like teeth because they are going to be omnivores I have decided they eat spider meat from the legs and then they eat whatever bioluminescent plants they find. And we have ear. Okay, cool. We also have height. Um, as far as their weight goes, their height will be 5'2 on average. And their weight. They are very spindly. So they're going to be a lot less than the average human. What is the average human for a 5'2? Which, the BMI scale is bullshit, but listen, it's fine. Let's look that up. Average weight for a 5'2 human. Just a human. Mm. It says... Okay, so I'm going to make them... Uh, between... 90 and 120 pounds. A little less than average, the average human. Yeah, less than the average, so. Uh, and whoever needs to convert it to their own measurements. I use the American system, aka the, the only system that hasn't caught up with the rest of the world, but listen, it's, it's fine. I it, there's not a problem with this. Let me let me use my feet. Let me use my feet. <laughs> oh no. Uh, let let me use my feet to measure, please. I am just a dumb American. I apologize. Uh, you know what? Fine, fine. I will be nice. I will, I will convert. I will be a good boy. So five two would be about 157 centimeters yeah. and uh, this would be about 41 to 54 kilograms there we go. Yay! I did it. So, we got all of that written down. And we have our limbs. We got our two arms and our two legs. Nothing else. Body features. We will look at the hands and the feet to see what we want those to look like. Uh, as you can see on my uh, fantasy race here, my, my template for humans... I have I have a shape for what eyes look like, the teeth and the ears, as well as the hands and the feet. Anyway, um So yeah, we're going to look at hands and feet. Cuz some races will have very different shapes. For me though, it's just going to be thinner human hands and thinner human feet that are just longer. So, thinner, but longer. Oh! Oh, hello! Oh, Captain Ryza, thank you for a host. <laughs> That's so nice of you. <laughs> the little giggle. Alright, but thinner, but longer, human-like hands and... <laughs> My handwriting is atrocious, but we kind of get the idea. Ha Let's clean that up. Hands and feet. So, that's what I'm going to give them. There we go. We are done with their body shape. Uh, we are done with their... Uh, any other features? Oh, right. So, <clears throat> getting into the, the crux of this uh, situation now. 
Um, the situation of unique features. They're going to have the black markings. Now these markings are going to come in various shapes, uh, but it's always going to be black on very pale skin. That is what I want. Um, I don't know if the pale skin should be like a straight wipe. Oh, thank you! Aw, here, th this is for you. There you go. There, that's for you. You keep that. You take that with you. There you go. I'll give it to you. <laughs> Alright, let's scoot this over. And for the final unique features, it's going to be the corpse paint makeup. They're going to all be very pale, and they're all going to have these black markings. It will always cover parts of their eyes, and it will always, well, maybe not always, but it'll probably most of the time be around the mouth as well. And it can pull down the cheeks, and it can go up the forehead. And from the mouth, I think it will always uh, if it's from the mouth, it will always ever make the top lip black. And sometimes it will make the bottom lip black. Only sometimes. And then it will occasionally drip down the chin. So these are going to be my rules that I set in place for these markings. And those are going to be my unique features. So let's put that into final practice here. Let me move this over here. So the final working template for you guys that you should have down are the physical proportions. There we go. I'm a little slow of writing. Oh, let's not make the brush that small. So, for physical apportions, we have the... Well, oh, uh, for me, it's just a <laughs> fantasy wish fulfillment. I really like uh, Victorian Gothic looks. I love spidery looks. Um, I also really like how... Uh, corpse paint looks, so I'm just kind of massing them all together to see what kind of race I can create from it. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know the reasons for everyone else, but I told them, hey, as long as you have a reason, it doesn't matter. It's, it's just fun to do. Um, whether or not I'm going to put them on my world is another matter. I'm thinking about it. I have no idea what I'm going to call this race yet, but... Um, I never really worry about names until I start working on, like, languages. <laughs> nice. Um, well, I actually did. I'm making a D&D &D scenario for my world. So, <laughs> I am a DM. Hey, yo, yeah, I'm a DM. Uh, I'm going to be starting my campaign soon. Uh, but I want it to be sort of like a, a visual novel style. So I want... Uh, I have to draw a few backgrounds as well as character sprites. Because I'm going to be using kind of what I'm using now uh, to talk to you guys with my PNG. I'm going to be using a much simpler mouth moving system. So when I talk to characters uh, as my NPCs... I'm trying to immerse them as much as possible with these uh, characters. Yeah, it's gonna be really fun. Uh, uh, I don't think I don't think my players are here, so shh, shh, shh. don't tell, don't tell anyone. Listen, shh, shh. We're gonna keep this a secret between us. All right. I'm gonna show you the. Okay, shh. Keep it a secret. I'm gonna show you my DM plan. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna show it if I could find it. Where did I put it? Ah, here it is. Okay, okay. Shh, shh. Don't tell them. Okay, good, good, good. Lips are sealed. Shh. Yes. Zip. That's what I want. Okay, here we go. Boom. These are some of the NPCs that they're going to be dealing with. And as you can see, I have folders full to the brim with their uh, eyes blinking like this. And then I have their mouths able to open and close. And this is set for all of them. And these are just the first three. Oh, thank you. They're very, they're very pretty ladies, I'd like to think. Um, yeah, it's a, uh, a young noblewoman and her, her handmaids. Um, I'm trying to be quiet because Leon is a part of this D&D excursion and I don't want to spoil him. But uh, yeah, I, I want to do this visual novel style. And then I'll have a uh, I have a template right here for where the backgrounds are gonna go, so that I know where to cut off the sprites. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna have the characters talking to them. It's gonna be really fun, but I have to draw a lot more characters uh, before I can before I can really start uh, before I can really start doing the game. I also need to finish my magic system because the uh, spell system, the way D and D does it, is Aw, oh, thank you. I I hope so. <laughs> I just want to do good for them. Uh, but the D&D spell system is... It's not optimal for my world. My world has magic in a different way. It, in, in a sense, it, it kind of doesn't have magic. So I need to figure figure out how to do that. Aw, oh, that, that'd be really... I know. I thought it was going to be really fun. And hopefully... Uh... Hopefully you will experience something like that. I would invite a few people, but I already have like a full roster of players at the ready. Maybe one day I'll ho host my own uh, campaign on stream though, who knows? And I'll invite a few streamers, but for now this is just a personal thing that I want to do for my, uh, my players, my friends. Alrighty, so we have the. I put down the physical proportions. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, I already have a full roster. I'm sorry. Uh, it was set up for a few friends who have never actually played D and D before, so I might be ruining them by changing so much. <laughs> Cause I, like I said, my campaign is going to be a lot different. It's going to be online, and it's going to be visual novel esque. And there is going to be combat, but I want there to be uh, differences in races as well as cultures and the way races and cultures work. Because in normal D&D, it's like, oh, you choose your race and then you choose your sub race and then you're good to go. Like, I'm going to be an elf and then I'm going to be a wood elf. Oh, well, hey, you started, at least. D&D is really fun. And there are so many ways you can take it. Alright, we gotta get back to the, uh... Back to the race creation for all you lovely people. Uh, facial features. Okay, so physical proportions. We gotta look at the basic appearance. Which is... Nope. Which is what we did. We shaped their body. We looked at their faces. And we figured out their heights. Uh, the appearance had to do with uh, their body, oops, as well as their head. My handwriting is atrocious, I apologize. Alright, so that's what we did. We got their body shape and their head shape. This was from starting. Oh, that's really good. Um, when I first started D and D, I had no, no. It's actually bad. I promise. Um, I've been told it looks nice, but all I can see is just all the crooked A's. 
but when I got to play D&D, it was with a bunch of 30-plus-year-olds, and I was like 14, and they're like, yeah, sure. I was... They probably definitely were just accommodating me at the time, so they knew what they were doing, and I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> Looking back on it now, I'm like, yeah, I was probably just being pandered to, but that's, you know what, that's fine. I had fun with it. It sparked my love of D&D &D even more, and it was, it was fine. It was, it was good <laughs> for what it was. So we got down the appearance, and now we got to do... Oop. Oh jeez, that poor A. Never got closed. Now we worked on the facial features. I took out the eyes. This is just a quick template to make sure you guys followed all of this to uh, keep everything concise. I checked their noses. I did their mouth. Which can also include teeth and tongue shapes. Because there are a lot of species out there with very different tongues. Uh, human tongues are... Uh, our kind of tongues are pretty... Actually, DM... Oh, nice! Yeah, DMing puts into perspective how D&D works a lot. And then it makes you a lot more... I don't want to say appreciative. What's the word? A lot more experienced in making a new character. Nice! Yeah, I, I love writing worlds. I like making worlds. So, with my D&D, &D, it's not necessarily stories that I'm focusing on. I'm leaning in on the characters that the people run into, and I let my players kind of shape the story around them while there's stuff happening in the background. And if they, they coincide with it once in a while. <laughs> Alright, so, oh... Oh yeah, no, that's an that's an end. All right, so facial features and then ears, and that's what we've done here. I have gone over the eyes, the nose, the mouth, as well as how their teeth and their tongue is gonna be, which is it's just human. It's just a human-esque face. And finally, we worked on the height, the weight. actually do this. Whee. That was bugging me. And how many limbs they have and what these limbs do and function. Once again, just human. I'm I'm boring today <laughs> with my races, but I've made so many that are cracked out already. I figured I'd make something a little more down to earth. Yeah, but the hands are going to be thinner and longer. Okay. Alright, and now we worked on body features. Oops. Which included the hands and the feet. Um, if you want to more work more on other bodies, uh, first we have a ghost. Ooh, a ghost! Oh, misunderstood ghost. A character named Oliver. Became a recurring character. That's so nice. Sometimes the best villains are just friends the heroes haven't made yet. <laughs> and yeah, uh, world creating, specifically character and culture creating, it's it's a beast on its own. It's so fun for me. Because like I said, I prefer like fashion and language and like the people more than I will work on a geographical like design any day. <laughs> it's same. Alrighty. So yeah, um if you want to do something other than hands and feet, like if you want to give them a tail or gills, or if you want to explore the shapes of their keratins, uh, that's where unique features come from. I have something on my glove. There we go. It was a cat whisker! I had a little cat whisker on my glove. 
my my sweet boy. So yeah, give them other features, which can be like tails, gills. And anything else you can think of that you won't find on a usual human. Uh, I know Rat Dread was talking about having a rock race, so they would be putting plates and exploring the way their plates on their creatures work. And now, haha, <laughs> for the fun part, hair. For me, the hair is going to be simple, it's going to be human hair. Um, most mammals uh, have regular hair. So if it's mammal based, it it can just have hair on top of the head, and call it a day. Um, I know a lot of hair positions for most mammals uh, has to do with the top of the head. Um, we also get hair here on our chest a lot, as well as here, um, and on the backs of our arms. We can also get it on our faces, like here, as well as the legs. So just look at the hair placement for the creature that you're making. Uh, I set up a town that wasn't on the map. Oh, nice. The main mystery you put in this version. Oh, dude, nice. I really love uh, Cthulhu stuff, so anything with a little bit of Eldritch Horror is always fun. So for my hair, I'm probably just gonna keep it on their heads. I can't, I can't see them having too crazy uh, facial hair. Let me look at the corpse paint, cause uh, I know a lot of heavy metal artists shave their beards, and they're always they're clean shaven and they have the full on makeup. So I'm going to emulate that by just having them not really be able to grow facial hair. Maybe they can on occasion if they're like interbred with humans. But other than that, I don't think they can naturally grow beards. <laughs> that That's the best kind of horror though. You just suddenly sneak it in on them like, hey, you thought this was going to be a fun adventure. Turns out, uh, look, spooky shit's happening. So yeah, no beards for my babies. Um, I gave enough facial hair to my dwarves. <laughs> my my dwarves are oh yeah, my dwarves also called dwerg are uh, rodent like because Tolkien babe love ya, but listen, we don't need to keep copying your homework. <laughs> I know that's what a lot of motherfuckers do nowadays. Still have notes for the sessions. Oh nice. It's always good that you have your stuff. No, no, it's fine. I like hearing your rambles. I like talking. I like talking to you guys. I promise. Now I'm just looking at corpse makeup. <laughs> yeah, it seems like a lot of them don't wear beards. So, we're not going to put beards on them. Especially since we want to see that beautiful, beautiful corpse paint. Alright, so other features, tails, gills, all of that's down. No, oh, you're not rambling too much. If anything, I'm rambling too much. <laughs> if anything, I'm talking out too much. Alrighty, so yeah. Hair. Worry about hair location. hair function, anything that you can come up with. I know, uh, oops. I know even insects have some sort of, like, hair-like follicles. Oh, okay. See you in a bit, Ryza. I know insects even have some sort of hair-like follicles. Uh, they, they can be fuzzy, like tarantulas are very fuzzy babies. Um, 
even even black widows have just a little bit of hair on them so yeah so if you're making an insectoid race they can even have hair that just depends on where you want to put it and what its function is um if you're making a more avian or lizard race, they're probably not going to have hair. They're instead probably going to have feathers because they're uh, more raptorial. Uh, kind of like um, like raptors, yeah. Like uh, the dinosaurs of old. They, they had feathers. Um, so if you're making a lizard, they could also have feathers. Um, alternatively, they could have uh, frills. Uh, frills that stick out um, that kind of fall down their head like hair. Maybe it's even colored differently. Uh, the world is your oyster when it comes to hair and hair-like function and design. Uh, it could even be, like, maybe tendrils. Like, very thin tendrils. I know the, uh, Twi'lek from Star Wars, they don't have hair. They just have those two giant dwingles on their heads, whatever the, whatever the fuck you want to call those, those tentacle thingies. Um, so, uh, oh, uh, and, uh, what are those ladies? What are those, the blue ladies from, uh, Mass Effect? Oh no, I forgot what they're called. I just remember the name of the lady. I just remember Liara, and that's it. <laughs> I don't remember the name of their race. The Asani? Asari? I think it's the Asari. I'm sorry for forgetting. Yeah, I think it's the Asari. They uh they don't have hair either. They have those little those cute little like cuddle bone cuddle fish like inspired head shapes. And it's really cute. Um so yeah. Whatever you feel is worth it. You don't have to put hair on them if it doesn't make sense or if it just doesn't look good to you as a design. You could you could say have no hair. No hair? Oops. <laughs> no hair? And then you can replace it. You can replace it with something uh, that matches the aesthetic and the design that you want for your race. For me though, I'm just gonna have standard human hair this time. <laughs> uh, the next time I do this, I'm probably going to create or work on my daubers. Alright. Uh, as now, where would we be if we didn't have a world full of color? I did mention that I wanted these guys to be very pale, with black uh, markings. But I never specified if I wanted them to just be white. I don't know if I want them to be strictly white colored. So let's look at colors. What are we going to color this creature? Let me scoot this up a little so you guys can see it. Uh, first thing, skin color. Uh, like I said, I want them to be very pale, but I don't know if I want them to just be strictly like white, white. Like I'm talking like I'm talking like eggshell white, like clown white makeup. Like I don't know if I want that, um, but I will think about it. I do want the black markings though, so let's let's put this down. Skin markings. I want skin markings. I want the pretty black uh, lines and paint uh, varieties and all that good, all that good shit. Um, I think it would be very pretty on these people. Um, and now hair color. Hair color. Uh, I have spent the least amount of time thinking about their hair color. Um, it could be black, but I already have black markings on them with a white-ish facial color and body color, so I have I have a feeling it would get a little too monotonous if they just had black or white hair. Maybe, maybe dark to light hair, but I think it should always have some color to it. Otherwise, this isn't going to be as fun. Um, maybe they could have colors... Let's see. If they have copper-based blood, um, would that mean they have cool-based colors? Because 
I've noticed a lot of creatures, especially mammals and humans, uh, we do have red internals, which means we also have red-based uh, externals. We never seem to lean into a more purple, like a purple-blue color, and we never go past yellow into a more green color. Does I don't know if that has to do with our blood color, but I'd like to think it could definitely be some sort of inspiration. So, say if you are a race with uh, blue colored uh, internals, including blood, um, maybe instead you had blue colored hair, blue based eyes, although our eyes are every color pretty much, so maybe they wouldn't have so much of a strict rule on eyes. Maybe they would have full range of color on eyes too. Mm. But I still haven't figured out if I want to make them copper or iron based blood. So I don't know if I want them to have warm colored hair or cool colored hair. Hmm. I could... Mm, maybe it could be a whole array. Let's go... Let's, let's look. Let's, let's test this theory. What would it look better with? Let's draw up a little little mock one more time. Here's my here's my little here's my little guy. I am gonna give them black sclera. Let's color that in. Give them the ear. This is just a quick sketch, it's not anything crazy. Give them their their gaunt feature. Yeah. Uh, uh, for the sake of simplicity, I'm gonna just give them some simple widow's peak hair, just to test out the colors. There we go. Just a just a quick little little design. This isn't. This isn't good looking at all, but hey, it, it works as a basis for me to figure out what I'm going to do. So let's, let's add on this person's corpse paint, or their, their black markings. Um, how do I want you to look, little one? Let's give them maybe a cool tree branch, like growing tree look. Yeah, maybe something like that. That looks nice. And maybe something like this. Maybe give them just a little bit of mouth. There we go. That's kind of how I want them to look. And then their eyes will be glowing. Just do this to kind of remind myself. Their eyes will glow. What kind of hair would look good on these things? Let's look. I know I want their skin to be a really, really pale color. So let's... Mm, that's a little too dark. Let's go in there. And do this. And feel free to do the same thing if you need to work out what colors you're going to be putting on your creatures, uh, go for it. This is all just exercises. Mm, let's, let's do some Googles here. Let's look at some human hair colors. Because I do want to test around the color. Where is it? <laughs> Alrighty. Um, doo -doo -doo. Yep, there we go. Let's 
Let's try with something a bright, like maybe a fire truck red. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, I this looks pretty good so far. Let's uh let's actually do this. So I can fill this in a bit. There we go. Mm, I say red. It looks nice. I like that red. Uh but would orange look nice too? start looking through this. Um, mm, eh. uh, no, I'm not a fan of the gold. I'm not a fan of the blonde. I like the red. I like the reddish colors. Maybe pinks? I like the red. So maybe they'll go between orange to a purple. Maybe to a blue? That's that's really pretty. Hmm. I can't see a reason to make their hair orange to yellow to green. So maybe it would be between red and blue. Red, purple, and blue. Hmm. So far though, I really do like the very vibrant red. Maybe, maybe a bit darker. There, that is very pretty. Actually, let me look. Let's see what black looks like on him. Mm, yeah, see, too monotonous. I figured. It, it's to me, I don't like it. But I do. Oh no, too dull. I want their hair to be vibrant, a very vibrant color. I realized. I really like the just pop color. So. Yeah, they're probably never going to have dull hair color. Maybe it'll go into a lighter color, like maybe up here at some point, but I think it will always stay extremely saturated. Let's see, like a darker, darker red, but never in this range, never in this duller color range. I think I'm always going to keep it very saturated. That'll be a very beautiful, striking dichotomy. Uh, to go with their otherwise monotonous, uh, mon monotonous, that's the word, uh, skin color. Because, yeah, I think the, the pale, really pale skin color with no discernible color to speak of would work. Mm. What about their eye color? I know that they're going to have irises. I, like I said, I think they're going to have eye colors that range throughout the entire rainbow, but maybe that's going to be pastel. Like a very, very light color. Let's let's try it on. Let's, let's give this guy, girl, whatever it is. Let's give them... Let's, let's give them a very... Ooh, that is, that is very pretty. Um... Yeah, like a very, very pastel look. Always in the pastel range. I think that's very pretty. Let's see what it looks like when it's pink. Even pink, I think. Pink and purple would be allowed. That is really pretty. So yeah, I'm going to stick with pastels for the eyes and vibrant light to dark colors for the hair. Uh, in ranges of red, maybe orange, depending, uh, but mostly reds and purples into like an indigo, like this. I think with 
those would be really pretty colors on these people. Um, yeah, so we'll get a little uh, get a little palette set for that. So, oh, that's the line art. So for their palette, their uh, hair color, their uh, skin color actually. Let's start with that. Their skin color is going to be very very black markings with very pale white skin and then the skin markings are going to be black and hair color I want to be very vibrant red uh, maybe orange like that vibrant orange oops uh, vibrant maybe magenta and then a very dark vibrant purples but always very bright then we pull it into the vibrant blue there we go I think that works fairly well for their uh, hair colors let me switch this because it's bugging me I have a, I have issues and it's called the colors were not the same spot there we go yeah, there we go. There's their hair colors, I think, would look really good. I need to save this. <laughs> I've been working on this for an hour. I have not saved. Woo! Oh, hello, little kitty. I have a cat. Excuse me, sir. So, yeah. I think this could work really well. else I need to add I don't think so I think I did it hmm. do I want their skin to be able to get darker though that's the question uh, I know I want them to be pale like a grayish pale but do I want to give them the option to have a bit of a darker tint at times Maybe AO like this. Oops. Like this, maybe. Hmm. Maybe. Uh, maybe. It might depend. It'll probably depend on what they, what if they're half or not. Because I do want to give them darker colors, but uh, they don't have enough sunlight to be able to have them. Also, should I give them markings on their whole bodies? That's the question. I did give them skin markings and work a lot on how their faces should be, but should I give it to their body structure? And how should that work? Let's test that. So, let's grab you up. Move this out the way. Okay, so, body markings. How do we do that? Mm, I could... I don't want to give them stripes. Let's see. Maybe blots? Like a like a Dalmatian? But not necessarily spots. Sp oh, I know. Vitiligo. Maybe it would be in some sort of patterns of vitiligo. Which is very pretty. Uh, very pretty uh, skin patterns that humans can get um, whenever they start losing their melanin. I think that could work. Hmm. 
Maybe something like that. I think that could work really well. Let me test that out. <laughs> Close to the distance is playing again and I'm getting ready to cry. <laughs> Alrighty. So maybe they have... Because uh, I did say whenever they grow up, uh, they start off with mostly uh, black skin like this. Maybe with little streaks here and there of... If I could color faster. <laughs> this looks so messy. So yeah, maybe when they're little babies, they have this uh, black skin. There we go. And as they age, they get uh, stretch marks on their faces. Maybe as they age and their nose gets bigger, it starts to spread out like this. And then it starts to spread more across their face like that. And then over time, it'll just start spreading even more until most of the markings are gone aside from the markings that are on their faces. Um, that means it would also stretch across their necks like this. So then they would have markings on their ears probably in different spots. Um, maybe they'd have freckling on their neck. Uh, they'd probably have freckling a bit on their face from some spots. Maybe some even have black freckles on their noses. I think that'd be really cute. And then I'm feeling mm, they usually grow. Humans usually de develop and grow and their chest stretches. I know we get stretch marks on our chest. We get It's going to be like inverse stretch marks actually or inverted stretch marks that just naturally add a pattern to their bodies over time. So they're probably going to have a lot more black on their backs and a lot more white on their fronts and under their arms. Maybe their hands, the palms of their hands would be white, and the tops of their hands would have like little splotches of black. I think that would I think that would make sense. So something like this maybe. Here's a hand, long, spindly, pretty hand. Um, I'm not sure if I want them to have sharp nails or not. I, I'll just give them regular nails. Here's their hand. Boop. And then they would have... Hello, kitty. And then they would have... Oh, he hit me in the face with his tail. What a rude little brat. God, he hates me. I love my cat, but he hates me. He absolutely loves Leon, though. Um, he will let Leon pick him up and literally smooch him all over the face. They will snuggle, they will nuzzle, they will head bump each other on the forehead. It's adorable. And then I like reach out to even try to pet him and he'll he'll let me pet him twice and then he'll bite me. It's it's rude. He's rude. <laughs> he's a mean little cat. Well actually he's not mean. He's a very sweet boy. He's just mean to me. He bullies me. And I don't know why. <laughs> I'm the one that crawled around on the, the asphalt for an hour chasing your ass trying to get you out of the cold. <laughs> but no, Leon's the loved one. Whatever. <laughs> Alright, what was I doing before I started yelling at my cat? Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to give them splotches on their hands, probably. Like these little... Uh, so instead of hair, they're probably just going to have splotches. Like where our hair is, usually, is probably going to be where these little black freckling is going to occur. Probably have like this, like make them look like a, like one of those ink blot tests. <laughs> Maybe they'll occasionally have these little like freckles. And then the palms of their hands are probably always going to be white, even when they're babies. Oh, hello Milano, how are you? Welcome, welcome. It's the f it's everyone's favorite bun bun. Uh, 
Oh, nice. Breaks are always good. Uh... Let's give you one of those. Let's give you a little shout out. Milano Truffles. My good bun. Yeah, right now we are uh, world building. We're, I'm working on a, a race, a fantasy race, from scratch with everyone here. I told everyone to get a piece of paper or a Google Doc and just start writing stuff down for ideas that they have and to follow along uh, in making a race and brainstorming. Yeah, right now I'm creating a... Uh, <laughs> it looks kind of weird right now, but like an underground species... Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 really fun. I want to do this more often. I know I want to do it with a language too. As well as clothes, just just create an entire culture with everyone in stream. Okay. So this is what the hands. I'm probably going to have the feet do the same thing. I'm gonna have the feet do the same exact splotting. So the hair and the skin markings are gonna be splotted. Let me fix my brush. So I can go back to writing. Alright, now that I have figured out how that is going to design, we are now going to look at the eye colors, which I've already said. I'm probably gonna keep it a wide array of color. Every color you can think of as long as it's very pastel light, because it's going to be glowing. So, eye colors. Let me get to my original layer. Eye colors. And those are going to be all of the colors, as long as it's light. So it could be a light pink, a light yellow, Light green, blue, whatever. And there we have it. Now time to put all of this together. I'm going to draw over my template that I had written here. Um, if you can't draw or you don't like how your art looks, that's still fine. You can still uh, draw something to at least keep up with the uh, how you how you uh, see it, my eyes are going a, a little wonky here. <laughs> Let me fix myself there for a second. Let me just uh, do this. Whoop! Let me adjust myself. Alright, whoop, I fixed myself. There we go. Yeah, my eyes were, uh, my eyes were being weird and aligning, aligning a little weirdly. <laughs> so, I'm better. Um, so, here we go. We're going to outline this race that I have created. And if you want to follow along, that's good. If you want to maybe even, uh, copy what I've done here with the uh, proportions shape, you can. And now we are going to work on the design for the creature. The final, the final concept, the final countdown. I'm gonna give it a single, uh, not a single, a final pass sketch in order to get the facial structure right. I'm also gonna do this so that I can see it when I'm not zoomed in on it. There we go. And I'm going to have this at the ready for when I need to reference back to what I was drawing. And we're going to pull up my human look so I can see the facial structures. And we're going to copy that over, at least for me because I've already drawn this like 5,000 years ago as a template for this very occasion. So, I want the eyebrows to be very minimal. 
though. Oh, wait. I know. I have a symmetry tool that I can bring over here, too. There it is. Boop. That'll make it faster. Alright, so I want the eyebrows to be pretty minimal, pretty small. Uh, something... <laughs> my eyes went wonky again. Hold up. Uh, let me see if I can't fix that. Uh, let me just duck under the table. Ugh. I don't know why my eyes are acting up, but they are. So I'm just gonna fix that here. And I'm gonna make it to where they don't move at all. For now. There we go. And now I pop back under the table. Ooh, hello. I am back. <laughs> I am back from under the table. Alright. So, minimal eyebrows. Uh, very big eyes. Much bigger compared to how I have my human eyes. Um, and I did really like this, like, arching shape that I did. Uh, it looked like that. So the eyes are going to be huge compared to a human's. Uh, as well as the iris and pupil. Now the iris is just going to be this, like, thin ring that goes around the pupil. And the pupil is going to be this huge... I... Wow, my eyes are acting up again. Ugh. Hold up. Eyes, I told you no. No looking anywhere. Stop that. Oh! Kana! Thank you, Kana, for the raid! Hello, hello! And welcome everyone who is here! How are all of you? How is your stream? Hello, Pip... Uh, Pip Malice! Yeah, how was, uh, how was Soul Calibur? I know that's what you were doing before I hopped off to, uh, start my own stuff. Good, nice! Uh, I know you were making yourself. How did that go? Two of the Hollow Live Council girls? Ooh, which ones? I don't know too much about Hollow Life, but I would. I, I think I know like a couple of them. I know Gura at least. Crony and Bay. Ah, oh, fuck. I don't know either of those. I am trash. I am so sorry. <laughs> All I know is I think I know Gura and I know Amelia Watson, and that's it. <laughs> oh, but I'm sure they looked beautiful. I saw, like I said, the beginning of your stream before I had to hop off. But it looked really nice so far. <gasps> oh, thank you! Thank you for the follow! Thank you for uh, entering my bat cave. Welcome. Welcome to the bat cave in Little Soho. For those of you who don't know who I am, uh, my name is Desmond Dracula, and I am a bat butler, aka a battler. And I love to draw art, and I love world building. I play a variety of games from RPGs to roguelikes. Right now, we are world building. <laughs> we are creating our own fantasy race from scratch. <gasps> bat gang! Bat gang, nice. Pip, fellow bat friend, hello. I know Kana is also bat gang. <laughs> it's, it's... It's a, it's not really uh, too difficult, I don't think. Um, I do have a template uh, that I created myself uh, a long time ago that I've been using uh, right here. As you can see, I wrote down the template and everything I usually take into consideration. Uh, and this is the race that I'm working on. <laughs> They're like a uh, an underground... Uh, gothic, uh, corpse paint looking, like, m death metal looking race, um, because I need some wish fulfillment in my life. I, I, I just want to make a race for once that's just me making my peak aesthetic. <laughs> so, that's what I'm doing today. Um, and whoever else is here following, uh, oh yeah, I did! You like my hand? Look at him! Huh? It's my fingers! Um, if you need help with that, you can totally hit me up later. Um, you have my DMs on Twitter. 
uh, I don't know if we're in the same discords, but you can definitely hit me up and I can help you with that. I can help you set it up. It's really cool. Uh, you can see my hand up here on the tablet as well, next to me. And then you can see it on the screen. I'm so glad it's not uh, irritating. Aw, oh, thank you! It's custom made! Look at my beautiful pen. It's got a little bat on it. You can see my sleeve, even though my sleeve can eh, get in the way of my writing sometimes. I have to I have to move it around, pull it off. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Hit me up on Twitter. I believe we're moots, so uh, you can definitely message me. And I will get you started on that. <laughs> And you can you can see my nails, my my beautiful nails. Look at them. I I polished them myself. I keep them kept. <laughs> but yeah, welcome everyone to the back cave. So if you are staying for the world building, go for it. Um, if you just want to lurk and listen to the beautiful, uh. Endwalker Final Fantasy music cover, that's fine too. Or if you're just here to listen to my my dorky little voice, then <laughs> you're welcome to do uh, anything you'd like. So I'm going to go back to doodling my my little babies here, my new race. Uh, and I am using this as a reference point. So, uh, and this is to make sure I don't mess up because I'm zoomed in pretty far on this side of the screen. It's just an art tactic that I've learned over over the years. So what I'm going to do is scoot this over so I can see it. There we go. Yeah, they're going to have... Uh... Oh, uh, for this, it's it's a wish fulfillment. <laughs> the race itself is wish fulfillment at the moment. Um, I'm thinking of putting them on my world, my own uh, fantasy world that coincidentally does have a D&D campaign going into it. But for now, this is just a race that I've thought about, but I've never really put into concept until today. And I'm going over how I do it so that people who watch this VOD or people who have been following along can do it with me. I know I saw someone talk about uh, making a plant race, a root people, which sounds really cool. And someone else brought up making rocks, like a rock race. And I thought that was really cool too. Yeah, it's more like a tutorial uh, slash wish fulfillment <laughs> uh, stream. So... Yeah, I'm going to use this as my... Actually, the eyes are a bit too big. Let's, let's make those a little smaller. There we go. Bigger than average, but still not so big that they look uncanny. And their heads are going to be a little more gaunt than average. Mm, maybe not that gaunt. That looks a little too weird. <clears throat> mm, sorry about that. I had to cough. Woof. Alright. So, yeah. I want their faces to be just a little gaunt, but not too gaunt. And a pointier than average chin. And their mouths are going to be a little smaller than a human's. So, something like that. I think that works. And they do have bigger eyes because they are from underground. So they have bigger eyes, bigger pupils, and the pupils will actually glow from inside because of bioluminescent properties that they have uh, within their body. And they have little bat ears because hee <laughs> hee! Bat! So I'm gonna give them their their pointy, pointy elfy batty ears. So let's give it that Mm, that's a little too wide out. It's up on their head a bit more like this. And then it comes down. Like this. And then they have the batty membrane. 
on their ears. There we go. Like that. And then... We draw their head. And then we do their... Hairline. Okay, that looks pretty good. So I'm going to bring that down to the body sketch that I made for them. Way down here. Oops. Let's make sure it stays in the middle. And I make them about... They're a little shorter than the average human, so they're going to be about 5'2". So about here. Which is 157 centimeters for all of you who uh, aren't in America. <laughs> which is probably most of you. And they're going to be very lithe, very thin, lithe people. Uh, very, um, maybe, maybe a little bottom heavy, who knows. The knight is still young. But I do want to work on their, uh, body shape designs. Nope, wrong brush. Woo, I love when I do that. Their necks are, oh. Their necks are gonna be a bit thinner, but a bit longer than a human's. A little bit. And their shoulders are going to drop a bit more than a human's, so it makes their necks look a little longer. And then they're going to have these sh shoulders, these uh, spindly, spindly bodies. Because I am basing them, aesthetically at least, a bit off of spiders. Oh wait, they also have these little dwindles right here. Yes, the scientific term, the dwingle, on their ears. There we go. It'll look better after I do the line art for it, but there we go. It's as good as I'm gonna get it. Um, both men and women, male, female, and you male, are all going to have the same body structure, so I'm not gonna really worry about that. Maybe the females will be a bit thicker. But other than that, I can't really... I don't really want to have like too much of a dichotomy between the sexes. Just because that's... I can't really see an evolutionary reason for them to have such a thing. At least for their people. Mm, maybe the women will be a little taller? Thicker and taller? Kind of like uh, insects? Because I am somewhat loosely basing them off of spiders, but... Uh, right now I'm just going to work on a male. So he's going to be very thin, very lithe. And I'll make the women thicker than a bowl of oatmeal. Oh, wait. Oh, oatmeal. <laughs> wait, mall. So we're going to give the boys a bit of that. Some chest shape. And they all have this roughly the same shape of the body, so I don't need to worry too much about that. Mm. They are mammalian, technically, so they will have a belly button. They are very thin, very lithe. There we go. They do have knees. What creature does not have knees? That is mammalian in nature. Nothing I want to see. Um, actually, let's do it on this leg. This leg's a little more out. Because, see, I didn't necessarily keep them... The, the sketch is not specifically symmetrical. <laughs> but it's fine. That's what this post sketch is for. I might give them a hip dip. Yeah, see, the males are going to have this. Maybe the females will be like this. Like, nothing too crazy. There we go. Very thin, spindly legs. Just like we like them. Okay. And they're going to have very lithe arms. Very long, spindly. Mm. 
Also very long hands. Longer than average hands from a human, despite their height being smaller. Their hands can really reach some spots. Yeah, just a quick. Oh, wow. That's a little too long and spindly. There we go. Maybe something like that. They will have four fingers and one thumb. Uh, I have made some races that have less or more, depending. But for these guys, they're just going to have the standard four and one fingers. And their feet. Their feet are going to also be long and spindly, like their fingers. Mm, I'm going to do it over here. Alright. There's their little ankle. Let's give them their their long legs. Let's, let's see what it looks like over here. Yeah, it looks good. Mm. Let's fix that up a bit more. How did I do it for the humans? Oh, I did it on both sides. Close enough. And I do want their feet to be very long. Or at least their toes to be longer than average. Very long spindly feet. Very long toes. There we go. Long feet. Uh, but it, they don't need to be wide. Because wide feet are for squatter uh, races, like dwarves. There we go. There is the body shape for my species. At least for the guys. Now let's make the let's let's shape on the females. So I'm gonna copy this little dude and scoot him over here. Because this is where the males go. Um, I'm also going to scoot it over to the U males, which is just uh, androgynous or uh, non-gendered. Let's make sure they're all the same height. That guy is a little too tall. Let's make him a little shorter. Alrighty, because they are all going to be the same height. But I think I'm going to make females just a little thicker. Just a tad thicker. We can turn off all this stuff. So, hello ma'am, you are going to be thick. Because who don't, who don't like them thick? Eh. So they're going to have a bit more padding, but not too much. It is going to droop. There we go. And then we're going to give them a bit more padding here. Maybe not here, but definitely here. There we go. Give them a bit more hip paddage. And other than that, I think they share the same shape as their men. There we go. Females. Females versus males. Females are just a little thicker. Nothing too crazy, though. But that's just me. If you guys want your males versus females to look crazy, go for it. That is your prerogative. Just know, I will come to your house and I will knock on your door politely to ask you to please don't if it ends up looking like a, a World of Warcraft a gender difference. Okay. Mm. 
Should I do anything for the other gender? Mm, I'll leave it here for now. It's just going to act as a base anyway. Because this is for clothing. Because <laughs> I want to work on clothing next world building. So we are going to put that down. And we're going to line this baby. Uh, using this as a template. Mm, the music's so nice. So, once again, very little eyebrow. And very, very big expressive eyes. There we go. Very big, big eyes. Very big irises, too. Maybe not that big. That looks a little weird. <laughs> but maybe like this. also have slightly smaller noses than a human's. How did I do the human noses? Ah, okay, like this. There we go. And very, very small little mouths. Just so small. Small, small houses. Houses? Small mouses. Mouths is the uh, wouldn't make the gender difference. Like yeah, 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 yeah. Like I said, I would come after you. <laughs> uh, angler fish. Oh, that, that's true. Angler fish do have quite the gender dichotomy <laughs> to the point where m the males are very, very tiny, and they just hang on to the female. The music is very relaxing. It's a uh, Final Fantasy pi piano covers by Chewy Melodies. And it's very beautiful. And this music makes me cry. Because I was crying the entire time I was playing that game, that expansion, the Endwalker expansion. I heard a lot of people were crying though, so... I was... I, w I was a part of the majority. How am I gonna do this? Jawline. There we go, because I want them to have a gaunt face. Mm, that, yeah, that looks good. Alright, kind of gaunt face. Dun, 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 ba -dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Sorry. Mm, I'll work on the hairline when I get their ears down. Because I want them to have, like, bat-like ears, but... Like a combination of bat and elf, which is hard to describe. So, something like that, and then something like that, and then they have these like little webs. Something like that. There we go. And now we're going to do the hairline. Nope. <laughs> Looked awful. Uh, hup. Mm, hup. Uh, hup. There we go. And the head. Yeah. That's good for the head shape. Now we're gonna go in. I'm gonna scoot this down, actually. To make, make sure people can see that. Alright. Uh, because all of the men and women and other have the same head shape and facial shape, I'm just going to do this sh sh this quick little fun artist trick. It's called um, fucking copy paste because I, I don't feel like it. <laughs> there we go. Boop. Oh look, haha, look how, look how much, look how much work I did on those. Haha, I did it. Uh, you'll never tell. Because the faces are not going to have 
much, if any, difference at all, depending on the gender. <laughs> so there we go. Big mood. <laughs> mood. Copy. Paste. Done. Call it a day. Wrap it up, gentlemen. <clears throat> Alrighty. Let's get in and draw this lovely lady's neck. And their collarbone will probably be pretty prominent because they are a very lithe, lithe, spindly race. As I've said many a times, I'm sure already. Let's fix that. Oh, that looked a little off. There we go. Uh, I'm going to bring this down a bit and clean this up. There we go. Give it a bit of variation. Hmm. That looks pretty cool. Maybe they have a very broad upper nose. Like this. Yeah, maybe they have like a really broad upper nasal cavity. Like that. I like that. There we go. Let's keep that for now. I like that design. Symmetry is a blessing. Copy pasting has always been a blessing for me, but I was always, uh, I drew in Paint Tool Sai until recently, so I have just now learned the beauty that is the symmetry tool. And I love him. I, I love her. We, we stan. Give her the booba. Very small booba. Nothing too crazy. There we go. Oh yeah. Uh, were you also sad when you switched? Because I got kind of sad when I finally got Clip Studio because it was half off. I'm like, yes. And I bought it. And then I looked at it and went, I'm not going to I'm not gonna draw a Psy anymore. Uh. <laughs> How long were you using Psy before you hopped on to Procreate? <laughs> years. Same. Uh, I think I I want to say I was drawing on Psy for 2014. That's, that is a pretty long time. Uh, let's, let's see. I actually bought Psy back in 2007? Maybe? 2007 or 8. One of those. When I got my first tablet. Um, so making this switch was definitely a tear-jerking moment. Because I was like, I have literally used you for over... Ha <laughs> ha, I definitely bought it. <laughs> That's how I read that. Um, no, I actually did buy it. Because I didn't know back then as a wee babby that you could uh, yar har fiddle dee dee that shit. But um, nowadays, the, the copy of Psy I have, I did have to yar har fiddle dee dee. Because... Uh, because I couldn't find mine. <laughs> well, that and the guy who makes Psy, I've recently learned, he's just a single uh, indie developer that just created it. So, for what it is, it's really good. And I do not regret giving him my money. I'd do it again, just because. Even though I don't use Psy. Because of how much that program has carried me over, like over a decade. So it really was a sad... God, this music is appropriate. It really was a sad, bittersweet moment to switch to Clip. I know Clip Studio Paint is so much better than Psy. Well, yeah, not better, just different. It's got... Ta uh, it's got font, it's got uh, comic bubbles, it's got 
It's the symmetry tool. So yeah, it has a lot of leg up on Psy, but Psy will always hold a place in my heart. I will never forget it. <clears throat> oh, same here. Yeah, it's just such a good program. I I still have that. You know what? That's that's fair. Um, whenever I want to draw, I just bring my my traditional uh, book and pen, but. It's not the same as digital art, and I've gotten really used to drawing like this. So, I've thought about getting something like that, but I have yet to make a, a commitment yet. <laughs> My, but hey, I've seen some really good stuff in MS Paint. Don't front. MS Paint's really good. Any program can be really good if you know your medium. You could draw a stick figure in MS Paint and it would still work because it's called art. Don't make me go on another art rant. I will. I think it was Monday I went on my art rant. I went on this like tirade of, No! Your art's good, I promise! <laughs> it's not as bad as you think. I don't remember all the points I made, but I was... I was righteously... Ri uh, righteously upset. Not upset. What's the, what's the word? I need, I need water. Hold up. There we go. Took a little sip. But yeah, uh, righteously passionate about people shitting on themselves and shitting on their art. It's like, no. No, stop it. Mm, intense. Not aggravated. I wasn't mad. I was just very, yeah, passionate. Very passionate. Because I get very intensely passionate about people who are like, oh, my art's not that good. And I'm like, here's 5,000 reasons why you're fucking wrong. Bitch, I love your art. Uh, reason two, uh, bitch, I love your art. <laughs> and I just started listing off all these reasons why people should look at their stuff and not be so critical. Because I too was in that position where I was just really critical of my stuff. And I look back on my stuff now and I'm like, why was I so critical on it? Why did I hate it? It looks good now. And I realized what it was. I didn't like how my art style was developing. I didn't like how my art style looked. Um, I might, I might uh reveal, reveal my hand here. Uh, but I can show you some really old art that I I drew a long time ago. And it's pretty simple. Um, it doesn't look bad. But I did not like how it how it looked. Yeah, if, if you want to critique your art because you want to improve your art, there's no shame in wanting to get better. No shame. In fact, nothing but improvement. That's how you improve, by just looking critically at your art. But you shouldn't hate it, and you shouldn't be comparing it to other people. That's something else that I see artists do. Yeah, see? That's that's another thing. Artists will, like, they will be the first to toss their old art out. They're like, I don't want to look at this trash. This is awful. Um, but I like to keep my old art around. I have art from when I was in high school. Over ten years ago. I have a binder holed up on my shelf on with my other books that I uh, just full. Hundreds of pictures that I drew while I was in class or at home on my homework like and I kept them I kept them all because I they meant a lot to me 
And nowadays I can just look back at them and go, look how much I've grown. Look how much I've improved. Um, actually, I will show you a piece right now. Um, because I have it saved in my folders. Let me find one of the really old ones. Uh, this one. This is a pretty old one. Um, <laughs> it's swift. Okay, so as you can see, this <laughs> it's very 2006 deviant art. Um, but you can see how my stuff has improved, and I can see. I can go back and look at it. I know it is. It's cute. It's it's very aw. Look at the ninth grader trying to draw. Like <laughs> at least that's how I see it. But I'm at the same time people who are at this level. It's so fucking good to just see them making something. And it makes me really actually thankful that I kept this stuff. Oh, thank you. Um, I... I could have... I've definitely gotten better with my anatomy, but yeah, I, I had a... I had a grasp on it back then. Uh, and then... Let's see. Uh, this is not the style that I was upset with, by the way. This was just me as a teenager learning how to draw. Oh, thank you. Um, the shading is very simple, but it still f serves a function. You can you can tell it's there. Um, let me look for a piece that I made. Uh, something like this. This was something I made in 2014. You can tell that I've definitely changed my style since uh, 2007, which is what this is pretty much. Or let's uh, let's actually line them up. Uh, yeah, here we go. Yeah, you can definitely see there is a difference in. The style. The style changed. And the shading is well done here too. But it was at a point where I wasn't very happy with it. Even though it does... Fundamentally it looks okay. It looks fine. I'm not... I'm not saying it looked bad. But there was still something that bothered me about it. And I don't know why it bugged me so long. Until one day I went... It's, it's true. It's not what I wanted. It's not how I wanted to present my art. So I started experimenting. I started looking at artists that I really liked. Which is a bigger help than what people think. Whenever someone says, you need to learn art through XYZ. Um, they are probably well intentioned, but they don't know how it will affect someone by saying you just need to learn how to do proportions and this and that and you're good because that's what I did I learned how to do eyes I learned how to do bodies and ears which here the ears kind of <laughs> what is that but um I learned all of these tricks and proportions and whatever H how do I do this I did it and I still didn't make me happy until I pushed myself to look at other artists that and figured out why their art makes me happy. What about their art looks cool to me? And I kind of I utilized different ways to I guess not copy them cuz I wanted my own style. Hey there, Riza. How you doing? I'm over here having a a sad chat, I guess. <laughs> not really sad, but emotional. Um I'm trying to find my art comparison that I made uh, sometime last year. No, uh, no, I'm talking about uh, style development and art. I'm um, going through my years of uh, art changes, and I cannot find the comparison that I made uh, sometime last year. cannot find the boy that I drew. Oh, here it is. Okay. So, this was about the time I started drawing Let me separate it a bit. Yeah, this was 2014. This little portrait. 
and this was 2015. You can see I'm still doing the eye thing. And I'm trying to find a way to separate it. There we go. You can see I'm still doing the eye thing, the, the more semi-realistic look. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's it's been a long road. Uh, but you can see I still had some aspects of this. And then one day in 2018, I said, fuck this, I hate how it looks. I mean, it looks good, sure, but it's not what I wanted. So in 2021, after a couple of years of learning how I wanted to do it, changed to this. And I'm a lot more happy with how it looks now. I've changed how the eyes work a bit. I pushed back into the like somewhat anime look while keeping that semblance of realism for the proportions. And I'm just a lot happier. So that's really all what... That's what you need, really. You just need time to find and develop your style. Thank you. I also love my style. Also, here you go. Oh, two hearts. Two hearts for Captain. Here you go. Two little batty hearts. <laughs> that one looks really squunky. I have symmetry tool on, so... <laughs> there you go. I always go on tangents. Why do I do this? <laughs> always start yelling about art style. Um, but it is true. Art is, is subjective. And it's about what you want to see yourself drawing. Not what people tell you you should learn. Like, yeah, it helps that you know the function of, like, how to draw an eye, how to draw a hand. But all of this, it's not, it's not necessary to know how to do it realistically if you're not trying to draw realistically. Like, look at Tim Burton's art style. If someone nowadays, like, uh, I don't know, a... <laughs> Yeah, tangents are tangents are fun. I am I am a very passionate creature. Yeah, Tim Burton. I love his art. I drew I tried to emulate his style uh, a bit ago. I want to say a few months ago, like early December. Uh, I'm gonna I can pull that up real quick. Where was it? Oh, here it is. Uh, I drew uh, Robert Smith from uh, The Cure. You know the post punk band. Uh, I drew him in the Tim Burton style. And it was really fun. It was a really fun exercise. Yeah, it was really fun. Robert Smith is a dope singer. I'm sadly not too big of a fan of The Cure anymore. <laughs> but yeah, if uh, someone were to look at that today, sorry, I was uh, making goo goo eyes at a, a hot bear next to me. But um, <laughs> if uh, someone were to look at that today, and if he wasn't an established artist, they they could probably look at him and go, "Hey, why is your arm so spindly? Why do they have like twigs for legs?" Someone could really tear into him about how he draws and. That's not the point of styles. To me, the point of art styles is knowing how to convey a symbol. Because uh, if I want to draw really simple, and I do this... I mean, what is that? That's an eye, right? It's clearly an eye. But how do we know that's an eye? I didn't... I didn't do, like... I didn't draw this... I didn't draw the pupils. I didn't give you all of that stuff, but you still know it's an eye. That's what style is. Learning how to symbolize what you're drawing in a way that's consistent with each other and just looks aesthetically pleasing to both you and the person ingesting it. Aw, thank you, Captain Riza. Uh, here you go. Eh. Oh. oh, very symmetrical heart this time. There you go. I need to make like a baddie heart emote. 
I want to make a Betty Hart emote. I'm not affiliate quite yet, but I feel like I'll be getting there at some point. Oh, thank you. Little heart. We. Eh. Nope. Eh. There we go. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I want to have a bat heart. No one can stop me. It is my stream. Oh, also, uh, people who are like, oh, yeah, I use MS Paint. Hee hee, tee hee, giggle. Haha, I'm so bad at art. Look at me. Like, no. No, you can use pixel art. There is pixel artists out there. You can make pixel art. <laughs> um, there's pixel dolls. There's, uh, you can shade in MS Paint. MS Paint actually has a, a, a function where you can change the color to whatever you want. And it's honestly really cool. Uh, as long as you know your medium, you have nothing to fear. You can make... Yeah, pixel art's really nice, too. Uh, I know Leon likes to make pixel art. And he did it as like a silly goof-goof, ha-ha, look-at-me pixel art at some point. But then he just started making more, and we all thought it was adorable. Uh, Leon is the bear that I live with, by the way. He is my, he is my, my baby... Uh, he was here yesterday. He was here playing Final Fantasy with me. And he likes to think that he's not creative, but he is. He is in his own way. Yeah, I'm talking to you. <laughs> he looked at me. Because he is sitting beside me. He's not joining us today because he's playing Monster Hunter. Because Rise just came out on PC, so he decided to leave me for Monster Hunter. But that's okay. Alrighty. Oops. I messed that up. Mm. No! I don't want the legs touching. Oh, also, for those who are looking into drawing, there are programs out there that are free. There is Krita, uh, I believe there is Al Fire Alpaca. Fire Alpaca is something I tried. It's, it's pretty good. Um... I mean, you could always yarhar fiddle dd, um, <laughs> uh, because I will never endorse someone uh, paying for a uh, potato shop because they charge way too much money for a rudimentary program that that's honestly outclassed by a bunch of free programs. Like, I don't use that program anymore. I used to use it for text because Paint Tool Side didn't have fonts. But now that I have Clip Studio, I have fonts right here. <laughs> I don't have to worry about it anymore. Goodbye potato shop. So if you if you want to try on potato or if you want to save up and get Clip Studio because I got it when it was half off. It was 25. So you could always wait for a sale for a program that you really like. Um, not just Clip Studio. Uh, even, uh, I think, 3D Paint or Paint.net is free. Yeah, it's, it's really good. If you can, get it when it's on sale. That's what I did. Uh, which, like I said, it's only 25. It's a one-time payment. Not sponsored, by the way. Um, I just really like this program. But it is superior to the potato shop. The little shop of photos. They also don't charge a subscription fee, which is really good. And is something I think Photoshop still does. Or Adobe, rather. So, yeah, I, I, I don't... I don't... I don't... I don't endorse people using it. It's... It's really, it's, yeah. <laughs> anyway. It's, it's really shitty. Which is why I find it hilarious when they get really mad that people are using Photoshop as just a general f term for photo manipulation. Because if people do that, it will enter into the uh, general vernacular and become non-copyrightable. 
and it's really irritating them. They're like, no, no, you didn't Photoshop it. You photo manipulated it in Photoshop. It's like, no, shut up, Adobe. You're charging $50 a month for your dumbass program. No, I don't care. <laughs> Get out of here. Welcome back, Ryza. You just missed a whole ass rant. <laughs> <laughs> uh but you did say you're gonna rewatch the VOD, so you'll you'll get to see, you'll get to see that. Uh that was fun. Oh dear. Oh yeah, these guys are gonna have really long little toes. Which honestly is probably pretty freaky to humans. Oh yeah, it was about Adobe. <laughs> it was about Adobe and their they're um they're very um, they're 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 very questionable uh, uh practices when it comes to finances but listen it's fine um <laughs> yeah <laughs> I don't know what their subscription is anymore like their the charge for the subscription but I know it's a lot I don't I've never paid it I have never once paid that subscription I said no thank you sir. It is! It's a scam! It really is! It's so bad! Especially when you have... Oh, After Effects? Yeah, mm, Yeah, once again, yeah, yar, har, fiddle, dee dee. We know the rest of this song. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's, it's expensive. It's way too expensive for what it does. It's like I said, there's programs out there that do it better. <laughs> mm, do I want the toes to be pointy? I might want the toes to be a little bit pointy. I'm thinking pointy toes. What are we thinking? Are we thinking pointy toes? Because I'm thinking pointy toes. Oh, Blender. Blender is really good. And it's free! Yep, even with the student discount. I know, um, I remember hearing once from Leon that at the school that he has been at, um, the teacher basically just said, just, just take it. Just, just go find a place that gives it out for free and just take it. And I'm like, that's that's me if I was a teacher. <laughs> I would be totally endorsing them. Like, listen, guys, listen, Adobe's not here. They can't hear me. Just take it. <laughs> no one will be none the wiser. No one can stop you. And I find that really funny. Because, uh, that shit is expensive. Right, I'm gonna give them pointy toes. Little gargoyle toes. Mm, yeah, maybe little, little gargoyle toes, maybe. Eh. Because their toes are pretty long. Little nails. How did I do the feet here? Oh, that's nah, fine. Oh, so you will see me flashing uh, another base here and there. That's my human base for my world. It's, uh, this is like my fashion template that I lay down like different races so I can test out their clothing. Like, uh, I did go on a little another tangent about how I, I spent two hours drafting up 200 years worth of clothing fashion for the humans. Um, and we can, we can go over that in a bit. Um, but for now, I want to work on races. But I do, next world building, I want to go over clothes. Clothes and, uh, what is it? Culture! That's what it's called. <laughs> So for now, I'm just drawing their little baby toes. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 
There we go. Let's, let's clean that up, actually. That looks a little wonky. Yeah, they're gonna have kind of pointy toes. Oh, I never erased this. Right. Let's fix that. Yeah, um, it will be on my schedule on Twitch. Or, uh, Twitter, not Twitch. Um, so... It will tell you when I'm world building next. Which, I don't know if it should be again sometime this week or sometime next week. I know I'm calling it world building Wednesdays, but maybe world building Fridays too, AO? We don't know. Um, I know I said I was gonna play League for Friday, but uh, my League playing partner is currently ingesting and binging Monster Hunter. So I don't know if he'll join me for it tomorrow. Or not tomorrow, uh, Friday. Tomorrow, I believe, is more art. Yeah, world building, week world building weekdays. An entire week. An entire week of world building. God, imagine. Alright, I'm gonna work on this girl's arms, and then she will be complete. Then we can start testing the skin colors, because I did go through here, like I said. No! <laughs> Wait, how do I... There we go. I did go through my physical proportions uh, checklist that I went with everyone else. And now I can use the body to test out the colors specifically, as well as hairstyles. Uh, and hair textures. Hmm. Should should tomorrow also be world building? This is technically art. It's it's art and world building at the same time. I think it could work. I don't think people would be mad. Yeah, I'll figure it out. Look at, look at her, though. She's so cute. Mm, should I give them the... Yeah, that works. Alright. Time to do the hands! The spindly little fingies. Alright, so their hands, just like their feet, are pretty long. Their toes are long, so their thumbs are gonna be super long. Because, um, fun fact, thumbs are just longer toes. I, I know you probably didn't want to think of that. But if you ever need help drawing a toe on a foot, just picture five little thumbs. Like, like here's a thumb. And here's a toe. Did it. <laughs> Thanks, I hate it. Yeah, same. At least it's not fingers. Three digited toes? No, thank you. That's uh, that's just a, a proportions thing I learned. <laughs> it's not my fault. <laughs> right, they're also gonna have pretty pointy fingies. Hmm. Yeah, pointy fingies. I'm gonna start here, I guess. How did I do the hand for these dumb bitches? How did I do your hand? Okay, yeah, the same way. So let's bring their hand in. I like giving them a little mitt. <laughs> hey! You didn't unlearn it. That means you now know how to draw feet. <laughs> or at least the toes of the feet. You're welcome. You keep that. That's for you. <laughs> oh, here you go. Here, you'll, you'll, you can get a little heart too. There you go, buddy. <laughs> Sorry for uh, traumatizing you with toes. Alrighty, her little hand is done with very, very pointy fingies. 
It's so late. Oh. Uh. Uh. I hate it here. <laughs> I'm here to cry. I'm here to cry and drink chalky milk. I'm already out of milk. Yeah, very spindly baby arms. Very spindly arms. Very long, very long. Just long. They're just long people. Alright. There is the female. Kind of batty, spidery... Mm, ch yumby chalky milk. <laughs> um. Alright, time to work on the mail. Hello, sir. How are you doing? Let's line you up with the symmetry tool and let's get cracking. Mm, yumby chocolate. God, now I want chocolate milk. Thanks. Thanks, me, for bringing it up. Mm. <gasps> Leon! Oh my god! He just appeared with chocolate milk! <laughs> uh, chocolate milk! Hold on. <laughs> I gotta get a sip. I gotta get a sip of this. Oh, that was that was pretty good. <laughs> that was tasty as shit. <laughs> I needed that. All right. Oh, whew, we vibing. I could go for another five hours, guys. <laughs> I got the juice of the gods. Hey, where's my music? Oh, there it is. <laughs> I thought it was... Uh, also, um, if you guys need a music music, music change, let me know. Um, I've just been vibing to my piano music, but I can switch it. I have, I have copyright... Uh, uncopyrighted music I could play. <laughs> Alright, so this is a dude. Piano is a vibe. It's true. And it's Endwalker. It's Endwalker music. Ugh. Beautiful music. Ugh, mwah. Soaking. Ugh. My guy. Thank you. I will never stop singing that man's praises. He is such a funny, great guy. The, uh, the, the uh, music director. Him and his team did wonderfully. Granted, this is a piano cover, so go look for Chewy Melodies, that's with an I-E, Chewy Melodies, who wrote the uh, piano covers. But it's still just good music, all around. Okay, so, lower shoulders. Uh, maybe make the men just a little more, a little more broad, not too much. Okay, let's scoot over to see the boy. Hello, boy. I can't say boy anymore without thinking of that, uh, I think it was a TikTok of this girl singing to the cat, saying, here comes the boy. That one. Alrighty. Uh, get your lurk on then, Captain. Uh, let's bring this back down so I can see my notes. Alrighty, uh, thank you for the lurk. Uh, hopefully my silly little laugh and my goofy voice <laughs> and my pretty music uh, keeps you company while you just chill and watch me draw these precious little cursed creatures. <laughs> 
Okay. Yeah, I will keep this here. And now I will draw the boy. Mm, okay, so if the females are a little more padded and they're spindly raced by nature, uh, I don't think they're going to have a whole lot of fat content on the males. At least not as much as the females. Because in spider terms, the girls be thick. Girls be thicky. They got they got the big booties. They got they got the they got the bugunkas. Yeah. They're cute and they thick. So with the men, they're probably gonna be even more smaller than the ladies. Maybe even by height? Hmm. Maybe the females are a bit bigger? Maybe oops. <laughs> right, symmetry tool. Maybe I should make the men just a little smaller. Uh, but what would I do with the you males? Mm. I'd keep the you males maybe the same size. Maybe a little bit smaller. Like in between the male and female. Nope, that's the heads. Yeah, let's, let's shrink them. Let's shrink them just a bit. Just a little. And then let's shrink the boys even more. So I'm going to scoot this over here. And I'm going to shrink the boy just a little more. There we go. Females, a little bigger. Still very small compared to humans, but... Um, as far as their race is concerned, uh, they are... The males are smaller. Let me shrink their heads just a bit. Mm, there we go. That looks good. Alright. So the males are going to be a little smaller, because spider-like. Um, and the U-males are going to just be a little bigger, but still smaller than the females. And when I say U-male, I just mean people who are uh, neutral uh, gendered. People who are born uh, maybe uh, intersex. Um, I'm not talking about like gender identity. I'm talking about like... Uh, like the th a third sex that might appear because we aren't just a binary as much as people on uh, as much as like 50 year old <laughs> people on Facebook would like to argue the point uh, we it really is a spectrum of mixed genetics <clears throat> I have to cough hold on There we go. But, uh, yeah, it's just for the, uh, third, uh, not strictly traditional male and traditionally female, uh, in-between kind of, uh, body shape. And I call it U-male because it's kind of a play on the word eunuch. It's just what I use for, uh, the term. So, I'm thinking, yeah, the- oh no, my symmetry tool! There we go. <laughs> My symmetry tool was missing. But there it is, it's back again, don't worry. Alright, let's draw these boys. Let's draw this beautiful boy. Boop. And just like the females, they have very prominent... Uh, Go. Very prominent uh, collarbones because they're very, very lithe, thin creatures and very low shoulders, lower than uh, the human average at least. And that makes their necks look a little longer. 
Now the females are padded, so the boys are probably going to have not a whole lot of padding. Sometimes I put padding on my boys because I have a, mm, I have a problem, and that's called I like it, I like them thick. But not this time, not this time. This time the boys will have standard pectoral muscles, uh, angled chest shapes, uh, like that. Maybe a bit more angled. Like this. There we go. That looks a little better. Let's clean this up. Um, but nothing too crazy, because they can't really build much muscle definition. Uh, this race is very... Just, like, I, like I've been saying, very, very little. So, nothing too big. Um... Very delicate, delicate creatures. Um, their belly buttons go horizontal because, fun fact, um, for some reason, uh, most I've noticed most females, and it may have to do with abdomen shape, but most female abdomens make it to where the belly button looks more like vertical, while masculine uh, belly buttons tend to be more horizontal, and I think it has to do with abdomen shape differences. Because female abdomens typically have like this, uh, it's higher up, their waistline is higher, while male waistlines are a bit lower, so that might play into something. So, I like to put that in there. But still, very lithe, very thin. Uh, got that. Male waistline's a little lower than the female waistline, so we'll drop it down here. Uh, not really any V-shape, like how human males have, like these really, you see uh, traditionally they have like these V-shapes on their bodies. I don't think I'll give them that. Now oh, my face itches. Alright, we good. Alright, just a little... Boop. <laughs> And I'll probably have a small dip, a, di a hip dip, but other than that, nothing too crazy. And we will keep with the leg shape like the females. This very thin. There we go. And now give them their knees. And give them their legs. There we go. I could just copy paste it now that I'm thinking about it. But I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna I'm gonna just draw it this time. I'm gonna be genuine about it. There we go. Not too hard. Very, very spindly. Very little babies. Oh my gosh. Uh, now the boys will also have these long little toes like the females. On the toes, I've noticed as I've been drawing them, which is just sort of a, a natural progression of how I think the toes would look because of how long they are, they're tipping down. Now, with human toes, I've noticed our toes do this. They go up. Our, our toes curl upward on our feet. But with these guys, their toes are doing this. They're coming down. Which is pretty interesting. It could mean that they're probably really good climbers, which would make sense because they're in a cave system. Uh, evolutionarily wise, they probably would have had to uh, have figured out how to climb the uh, the rocky surfaces that they inhabit. Uh, which means their fingers are also probably pretty long to help with that lift as well. Um, they're very, very small and thin, so they weigh so little that 
they don't need too much muscle definition to pull themselves up and uh, to build on that they're not that much weight to be pulled up to begin with so I think that's maybe why the toes could do that they are just they're climb they're rock climbers they're little rock climbers they use these toes to curl in and just hold on to the rocks There we go. Look at this cute boy. Pet him. Um, I don't. My hand is holding a pen, so I can't pet him. But I will. I will pet him with the side of my arm. There we go. Pet the boy. <laughs> I need. I need to have my hand uh, in a way to position to pet. <laughs> pet. Alrighty. Enough. Enough fooling around. Let's fence his. Fin fence. Let's finish his hands. Finish him off with drawing his hands. His pointy little fingers. Now, bear in mind, these aren't their nails. Their nails are about the same length as their fingers themselves, just like uh, the average human, if you don't bite your nails to hell and back, um, <laughs> like I used to. <clears throat> and they're not super long, like mine are right here. Uh, they, they kind of, they just match, so... The fingers themselves, the tips are like just naturally pointed. I'd like to think. And then we come in and we give this. There we go. Small, small little hands. And let's close it off by drawing the arm. Okay. So these are the females, these are the males. Uh, and these are the you males, but I don't know if I want to line them just yet. Uh, because I don't have any ideas for how I'm going to do the clothes for them yet. I also don't know what they're going to be doing in society. I think I'm going to worry about all of that stuff whenever I start working on the fashion portion of the uh, species creation. Because guess what? <laughs> this, this is one part. Physical proportions is just one part of the template that I have designed. I have biology, which goes into their locomotions and sleep cycles and chromosomes and all that. But we don't need to do that here. Because most of that is just information. None of it is, like, art-related. Um, I can just put it down and let people use it. But we don't have to go over it too much. Especially considering... These things share a lot of the same biology as humans. So I just just go, hey, it's human-like, and then just chalk it up and go away. Uh, but I would have fun drawing the growth stages. See what they look like from a baby. Like a little, little cute little, cute little baby. These little uh, under-creatures. Uh, I feel like they'd have a lot more black skin coloring. Like I said earlier, and then as they grow, they will get these black markings. The the white will come in, and it will stretch out like like stretch marks, and it will become these really unique patterns on their face and bodies. But I will do that when we get to biology. I'm not going to worry about that. I also have ecology, which goes over predators and preys, but I'm not I'm not going to cover that for a while. I'll, I'm gonna cover clothes before I cover that. That's like the more boring aspects of creation for me. <laughs> I just want to draw clothes on my characters. Listen. Oh, tattoos. I don't know. What? I don't think they'd have tattoos as a species. They already have such big, pretty markings. Maybe they use the bioluminescent mushrooms as like an ink? So they like have like cool glowing marks. Hmm. I think.
think that'd be pretty cool. We'll have to look more into that when I get to that part. We're still on physical proportions. But yeah, there's 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 six parts to this, and we are on part one. <laughs> so I don't know how many streams that'll take to cover the whole template. But we're, we got a whole template to cover. Okay, so yeah, you know what? You know what? Yeah, I'm gonna draw these guys. It doesn't take that long. I just don't know how I'm going to differentiate dif blah, 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 differentiate them from males too much. Hmm. I might give them a bit of padding, like females, but have them not as padded, maybe in the chest area, maybe just in the hips. Kind of like a back and forth sort of thing. Yeah, I think I'll do that. Alright. Let's scoochies. Over here. Woo. There he is. There they are. They are. It's a they. It's a, a an ambiguous gender slash sex. They will have really long necks, just like the others. Uh, probably thinner than usual. Oh no, it's close in the distance. Ah, crying. I'm crying. No. <laughs> this is my favorite song. Mm, let's not have that so close together. That looks a little awful. Okay, there we go. Shoulders. Mm, oh, what if they had wider shoulders than usual for some reason? <laughs> Immediately toss the idea. No. No shoulders. <gasps> oh. What if I did this? What if they had a bit of that? Mm. Mm. Eh. Meh. Yeah, that looks fine. <laughs> I don't know what to make their belly button. I just made it a diamond. It's a little diamond belly button. And raise their hips. And just give them the same thing I gave the other two. Long legs, long toes, long arms. And then we can start coloring them. <gasps> oh, hello. <laughs> I got duped. <laughs> I got snuck up on by a bear. I would have been lunch if I wasn't, you know cute enough to keep around, I guess. I hope I'm cute enough to keep around. Toes! Toes time. Finish off these legs. Whoops. If I can. There we go. Spindly little legs. Good for climbing. No. No. 
we work on their fingies. There we go. Finished. I made the standard female body model, the standard male body model, and the standard female body model. Look at these pretty people. Alright. Now let's do the fun part. Let's color these motherfuckers. <laughs> uh... Actually, I'm going to use my symmetry tool to help with this, just to make it faster. Mm, what are we going to call these things? I don't know what I want to call these creatures yet. I haven't come up with a name for them. Because mm. mm. I want to wait until I come up with like a language system for them, but that's not for a long... That's not for a long while. <laughs> and, uh... Language systems take a lot out of like a lot of brain power to come up with. So I could come up with a code name for them. Uh what code names would you guys give this thing? Give these little these little underground bat creatures, bat spider babies. Cause I'm thinking something to do with probably like underling or something, maybe. I think underling would sound really cute. Oops. Colored out of the lines. What am I, five? Oh, what the hell? Hmm. I have an idea. Let's see if it works. Come hither. It, yeah, it works for the most part. There we go, color in the toes. Gotta fill in all these little spots that my uh, bucket tool missed. There we go. And this. Yeah, I think I like the term underling. I'm gonna keep underling as a uh, as a term for these guys until I can find something more official. There you go, little one. You now have your colors. Well, your base color that I'm gonna be changing, but that works. All right, time to fill this one. Come here, dude. Let's let's. let's Let's put it all down. I was trying so hard not to say let's fill you. <laughs> uh, kill me. Alright, got your little toes done. Um, I can't tell if it missed the knee. Whatever, that's fine. Uh, no one can see it, so. Especially me. His, his nipples are just uncolored. I've also finally decided for their blood color because I have still been fighting for that. I think I'm just gonna keep it a, a nice, a nice red. Nice muted red. I'm still gonna give them blue hair though. Because that blue hair is just really pretty. Alright, let's work on your toes now, ma'am. Hmm. 
There we go. After this, we can start uh, testing out all of the patterns, maybe. Um, I know I want to maybe draw a close-up of their faces for doing pattern textures. Uh, because there are a lot of patterns you could do with their facial... Uh, their face markings. Oh, I just thought of a fun thing, too. Um, the pattern markings on their faces could also signify families as well as royalty. Because maybe over time, as they've gotten these markings, the markings become hereditary, or they are hereditary a bit. So as you age and you start coming into these specific markings on your faces, um, it starts to become associated with whatever house you're in. And markings on certain creatures start to become really favored because they can figure out how to get it down to a science to breed in the coolest looking or the most prestigious looking markings. Like say you want to have like a, a skull marking on your face. Um, they started having like some probably having a lot of really weird strict marriages for having kids to essentially have these markings. Um, I think that'd be pretty fun to explore. And I could definitely see that being a byproduct of these markings as a social status symbol. But there we go. Um, yeah, I'm going to call them underlings for now. I'm going to name this underling line art. And this will be my underling color. There we go. Now, on my notepad, I do have their skin color right here. And I'm going to... Oh, it's like magic. Oh, look at that. There we go. <laughs> oh, <laughs> alright. So, as far as the markings go, I am going to make a face separate, probably something like this, but a lot bigger in order to get those details in. But for now, um, I'm just going to leave in some probably default markings, like some some simple common markings that you'll see on a creature, just so I can have it down so we can see what these things look like in full uh, understanding and full concept. Because this is just notes. I want to see what they look like when I'm completely done with them with their cute little ears. So we're gonna go in and we're gonna fill that all out. So I'm gonna just give, let's see, the female, female can have, she can have some red hair. Oh wait, here let me uh, scoot this over so we can see it. Hello ma'am, you are going to have red hair. For the sake of this fun little exercise. Um, the markings, I'm not going to make fully black, just so I can have it different from my line art. But it is going to be so dark that you can't quite tell. I'm going to give them... Uh, actually, I'm going to start on their eyes. She's going to have black irises. There we go. And then, what color eyes should I give you, ma'am? How about, how about a really pretty blue? Um, actually, no. That that looks dumb with the red hair. Let's give you a gold. Gold. Gold looks really pretty. Let's give you a pretty gold color. All right. What kind of markings should I give you, just for just for the sake of having them? Um, I'll make her lip black. I like the black lips. I'm going to bring in the symmetry tool uh, for the markings. Where's my symmetry tool? Aha. Hmm. I might also add in just a little bit of uh, non-symmetry because not no one's completely symmetrical. So I'm going to start off symmetrical, and then I'm going to turn it off, and then refine it with a bit of uh, non-symmetry. 
So for now, uh, symmetrically, we're going to give her some black on her ears. Maybe a bit of black on her forehead. Little Those little blotches that they were born with. Um, little blotches on her neck. Like that, maybe. Mm. Um, and this one, maybe I'll have her mouth with a like just a simple little drip I think that looks good and then maybe something that makes it look like she's crying and then some bramble bushes like the the standard bramble look going up the eyes There we go. Now let's turn off the symmetry and let's add a bit dissonance to that design because like I said nothing is fully symmetrical. I mean unless you design it that way but there we go. That looks pretty good. Just a basic design. Let's put symmetry back on. So since they grow and these markings stretch on their bodies, it's going to be on the back for the most part. So they're gonna have these. They're gonna have the markings mostly here. And you can see it peeking out from their underside like this, I think. Maybe a few spots here and there, like some speckling. Like that, maybe. That looks really nice. And then they have some on their hands. The splotching and speckling on the underside where most of their hair would, where our hair would be kind of. Um, not here, of course, because that's where the stretching started. But certainly here and here. Kind of like a red panda's pattern. And then this would have some splotches. And all of their palms, no matter, even if they, like, for some reason are born with completely black uh, skin up here, their arms, or their hands are always going to be white, I'd like to think. There we go. So this is probably what they would just look like by default. Also, the backs, the bottoms of the feet will probably always be white, too. Sometimes the tops of the toes can be black. Tops of the fingers. Mm. Some of the knee, maybe. There we go. And then there we go. My race. This is how I would picture them. I did it. I finished them those of you who want to see them. Look how pretty. Um, these two I will leave alone for the time being, but this is definitely what the females are going to look like. Um, this is going to be the template that I'm going to use for uh, body markings, facial markings, as well as clothing whenever I get to it. Um, but I think that's all for today. We completely covered the physical proportions, which once again is here, if everyone wants to look at that. And uh, let's turn this all off. <laughs> let's erase that. Uh, but yeah, this is the physical proportions template that I used. Uh, I went over the appearance for my creatures, their body shape and their head. Um, and then I further extrapolated on that by going from their head to what their facial features would look like. And then I went specifically from their body to what their height and weight and their limbs would constitute. Uh, 
as well as their hands and feet and other features they may have, like a tail, gills, extra pairs of limbs. Maybe they're a centaur. Maybe they have a, a horse-like lower half. You know, that that's where that would go. Uh, and then we messed with their hair. Yeah, oh, thank you. I'm glad. Uh, th once again, this is one part of a template. There are five other parts to my template that I will be going over in the next world building exercise because I'm going to be putting these this new race through this entire template. So hopefully you'll be able to uh, catch up on that one uh, whenever it happens. Uh, you will figure it out. Uh, I put out schedules on my Twitter so you can see when my next world building exercise is going to be. Um, more than likely, I'm going to try and shoot for tomorrow as well, because tomorrow is an art stream, and I can just combine the art stream with the world building stream. Because I'm essentially drawing while world building, so <laughs> they're two in the same at this point. So Wednesdays and, Wednesdays and Thursdays, I'll probably focus on world building. And possibly Friday, if I can't play League with Leon, because I set it up for League of Legends... But then Rise happened, and yeah, I lost. I lost my league partner. Maybe I could do some solo games with uh, learning mid lane. But yeah, uh, check. Oh, whoops, <laughs> whoopsies. Uh, how do I yeah, get over here? Let's put you back. No, there we go. Yeah. Uh, so this is what we went over today. And this is what the finished product is. This is the female with the markings that I wanted and the facial structures that I wanted uh, and the one of the hair colors that I really wanted, which is uh, one of these. Where is it? Right here. And tomorrow I will probably have the male and the U-male ready to go. And we can start going over fashion. Oh, the clothing that they're going to be wearing. Uh, and how that affects them being an underground civilization. Oh, and maybe tattoos? I was considering tattoos. Maybe something used by uh, means of ink from a mushroom that's bioluminescent. Maybe they outline some of their markings to let it like pop and re-glow. I think that'd be pretty cool. But we will put that through the concept machine uh, tomorrow. Because I have been going for quite a long time. I don't know how long, but at least at least four hours, I want to say. Um, but thank you all for being here. Uh, thank you to Kana for uh, dropping in. <laughs> yeah, about four hours. Thank you. Uh, but thank you, uh, Kano Komori, for dropping in uh, her people to come in and hang out. Uh, thank you, Captain Ryza, for hanging out with me. Uh, Bulba was here at some point. Just everyone who dropped in today. Thank you. Uh, we are going to now scooch on over. Mm. Who do I want to raid? Let's go drop in on Hora. Let's go see Hora. Let's go see what they're up to. Alrighty. So, let's go hop over to them. Uh, thank you for staying here today and watching me create this. I will do more of that tomorrow. Uh, see you then. Uh, I'll be up at 9.30 a.m. my time. Like I said earlier, Twitter will announce when I am about to go live. So, follow that if you want to keep up with it. Alright, see you everybody.